where'd you get that sticker? I go, it's me. <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> don't you love me? You know, like I was the shit. You yeah, know? And yeah. he's like, dude, the owner fucking hates you, dude. He fucking put a hit out and you told all the other graffiti guys to get you. And I was like, look, we don't want to do that. Hey guys, this is Waiting to Dry. I'm uh, Josh Lawyer. I'm Sergio Lopez. And today we have our buddy Brett Crawford. <laughs> Hello. What's up, me. man? Yeah, uh, good. We're here in uh, Monty Guy's uh, basement studio. <laughs> is it a basement? Yeah, kind of. Right? Yeah, San Francisco basement. Basically, it's not underground, yeah. but it's the first floor where they have like the garage and stuff. Yeah, I've slept many a nights in this uh, studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's and, actually my first time here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and you and you're crashing at Monty's because you got a show coming up. So you're kind of you're from or you live in San Diego, right? Well, no, I live in a little. You know, I grew up in sort of in San Francisco. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, a lot of my life I spent in San Francisco. But now mm-hmm. I live down in a little beach town called San Clemente. It's mm. uh, right between. Uh, LA it's right in the middle of LA and San Diego uh, nice it's like the southernmost part of Orange County right yeah yeah I've been there a few times now doing uh events out there so yeah yeah it's it's, it's you know it's beautiful my when mm-hmm. I um my sister moved down there and she told me to come down and visit and um, yeah <laughs> it the weather is just like amazing and yeah it's clean I never I didn't realize how clean it was until I came home to San Francisco and realized it San Francisco smells like pee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I love San Francisco. So, I'm, you know, I don't want everybody in San Francisco to fucking hate me for saying that. But, <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, you, you don't realize it until you go someplace that's like super clean. Yeah. You yeah. come back and you get off Bart and you're like, oh, what's that smell? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it smells like pee, and then and then the sewer systems they they give us a good wafting smell all the time. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, so yeah, you trekked up here, crashing with Monty, um, but uh, yeah, and then you we, we wanted you on the show because of the uh, at this time at least because you have this show coming up in Minna, which is pretty cool. Uh, you're doing I forget the title of your show. It's called Caravan. Caravan. And, and it's yeah. a it's a second chapter in a story that I'm building called The Vaudevillian. Uh-huh. Um it was the first solo that I had um really ever in my life and um so this is the continuation of that story. Mm. And um it's you know it's a story that kind of helped me get past a weird little creative block that I had and right. and uh it's 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 a it's the funnest stuff I do. I'm I'm lucky that I I like to paint and I can ba- paint all kinds of different stuff, from, mm-hmm. you know, realism to cartoony stuff to hmm. right. um, other kind of stuff. And um, but this is the funnest stuff for me because I like telling stories and I like mm-hmm. making up stories. And so this is an, a way for me to just do both the things that I like to do: make make characters, make stories, and right. um, and have fun. Yeah, that's cool. That that is one of those things that I uh, I can tell within the artwork you're creating right now because I've seen other stuff where you do like more like uh, portrait work or stuff things like that where you really are trying to capture you know the the likeness of a of a specific person and right. um, the stuff that you're doing now looks very fun like you're it looks like you're enjoying it I think yeah I do I'm you know what it's is I when I started this one. Um, I I was just making like kind of want I I came I I made this one painting that's it's also in Mena right now that's the first painting I did of this series and mm-hmm. and it was just kind of some wonky characters mm-hmm. you know and they're fun to look at but they're they were just characters and then I made seventy five paintings for the first solo show and they were you know some of them were like one inch by one inch and they went up to like. 44 inches by 44 one inches. inch by one inch yeah little teeny like little square bamboo pieces that i painted these crazy detailed little polar bears and another <laughs> another guy like a jazz musician guy in there and because you know sometimes i like to really like challenge myself to see how much detail i can get in a little right. little small area oh, really? wow. um it, you know it's fun but I'm, I'm having more fun now like building the story and so right. I, i've taken a page out of a couple of friends of mine that 
the stuff that I like, like some of the, like, with, let's say we can use Monty since we're in his studio. The stuff that drew me to Monty's stuff mm -hmm. immediately wasn't, I love the, his likenesses. I love um, his technique of painting, but it was the stories in, within the, the painting, the little tattoos, right? the little, the thing in like, in, in like yours, Josh, the one, uh -huh. like in, the one my, my lady Kate loves is, uh, the one where you had the luchador and the little girl, uh -huh. you know what I mean? This, right, it's the yeah. story. What that draws me. Right, the that's, that's the thing that I thing. like. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody yeah. has their thing that they like about art, and mm -hmm. so now it went from making these characters to kind of like trying to tell a story, mm -hmm. and then also add elements of history, elements of art history, elements of pop culture, mm -hmm. and little kind of like obscure little Easter eggs for people right. to find. So I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, without forcing it, without saying, what can I put in there? Mm -hmm. If something comes up, you know, like I was explaining to you guys earlier, I found uh -huh. this, I found that this patterning looked like this thing. And then I was like, oh, that's, that'd be rad to put in. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it the research, the research part of it has become, and that's the part that, you know, I, I remember Monty saying that I thought, oh, I'm going to paint this picture of, uh, this guy and I need to do a whole bunch of research about it. And so it's mm -hmm. that, that element of it uh, has made the paintings much more fun for me, I think. And, and the response um, from my last show was the same thing. It was the people were like really trying to, I was putting, I was making the shadows, the shape of something and you know right. everything had it like it's, it's own little Easter egg that then when, when they found it, they got really excited. And then right. that, and I, that, I had the same feeling too, when it, when it, when I put it in and it worked, it's, it's made it much more fun. That's cool. Yeah. yeah uh, the I, I remember the first time I met you was, I think, at Kaboo. Right. Uh, it was just like a quick little like, hey. I mean, in the chaos of things, I think people were like, oh, yeah, he printed like all these prints. Right. And then I saw, remember meet, meeting you again here because I, I don't think I realized that you were like uh, San Francisco based. And I remember uh, I met you because... Uh, you painted a Frida Kahlo like mural, like at, right next to like uh, Wonderland. There's this poster wall that where you can kind of do whatever you want. I think I don't know if it's legal or illegal, but people just kind of let it happen. I guess. No, it has. It's a great story that wall. It's a the guy took over it. He bought. It's the old San Francisco um, Valencia Jail, that mm, building oh, right there. Okay. And this, I wish I I feel bad that I don't have his name at the top of my head right now. Um, the guy whose family bought that building, he has an arch architect's firm, and he fought with the city to, you know how they have those little easements now where they're like people where people can sit and all right. that kind of stuff? Uh -huh. yeah. He fought to have these two podiums put right there. So if you look at that space, there's these two metal podiums that go over the old meters, mm. and it's a it's a place for public dis discourse. So you can go there. I hope that's oh, it. I know Sometimes exactly I what you're talking about. the wrong that. word, oh. but is that right, discourse? So people, if, yeah. me, if me and you have something we want to either politically or whatever, uh -huh, you know, yeah. air our differences in public. We can go stand on either side <laughs> and the thing oh. and go, you know what I think about this, blah, blah, blah. And you say it <laughs> and I say it. We can, and there can be a whole crowd there. And then that wall huh. is another form of that. It's an art way where artists can put whatever they want on there. And you can put wow. anything. If you're some nut who wants to go put some weird, I love Trump shit on there. Then you can do that <laughs> yeah. and get beat up in the mission or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? so, um, but yeah, most people probably put, won't go well for right. you there. Yeah. So most people put the opposite of, in the, of the current administration up there. They've been, right. you can see right. there's sure. all kinds of hilarious different versions of people getting it off their chest. Right. right. Huh. And we had that Frida show at um, Wonderland and I was up here and every time I, you know, this week I'll, I'm going to try to find a couple of places to put a couple of my characters up while I'm up here and, um, and I painted her up there and, and I didn't expect, you know, when I was painting it, the guy came out and he says, you know, it probably won't, you're, you know, spending a lot of time on this. It probably won't go last. Right. And I was like, I don't care. I just love Frida and I love painting in San Francisco. And I like, I appreciate you. Let me have this wall to do it. And, mm -hmm. and then, and, uh, consequently it, it stayed up there for six months. Yeah. It was it, up there like, a good nice. amount of time. Yeah. And, and the, the, my favorite part about that piece wasn't me doing it. It was about four months into it. I came back up and there was a little, like, you know, it's layers and layers of paper and uh -huh. lots of different people have painted on that wall from Swoon to Shepherd Fairy to right. Banksy to, it has a, an amazing history. And the guy takes the stuff about every six months and he'll cut the whole wall off and he's saving it. 
Like he's, mm. he's building a, he takes a photo of it every single day. He's going to have books done about it. It's, you know, it's a really big cool. piece of San Francisco art history. And, yeah. um, so as the weather comes and the rain happens, it, that paper starts to either crack or peel off, whatever. And right in the middle of her forehead, there's, it, it became like a crack, which mm-hmm. is very, you know, it's, it's, it's like a wound on Frida, which has its own, you know, if you think about Frida's life, right. yeah, right. totally significance. Um, and then someone went in and painted one of those little black monkeys that she always has in her paintings in the little crack. Okay. <laughs> so she yeah. had one of those little monkeys and That's I awesome. saw it and I lo- it was like the best, that inter- that kind of interaction with street art, mm-hmm. other than somebody saying, I just want to paint over your shit. Right. right. I really love that. And I think even, I think Banks even at one point said, that's what he likes is it when someone does it. And I, Mm. and I do, you know, we were talking about, you said Barry McKee is one of your favorite artists. Mm -hmm. There was a, one of my favorite artists back from that era was, was what he ran with Ruby, uh, who went by Reminisce, Mm -hmm. who did the horses all over the city. I used to, I didn't know them. But I would paint my characters like either riding her horse or right. or lassoing her horse and being drugged behind her horse and you know and I was just this idiot and I just trying to I, I, I liked them a lot and I didn't know them and I wanted to meet them but mm. I, you know I did that a couple of times and and I don't know how they felt about it I never even talked to them about it you know what I mean so but I enjoy that kind of interaction with pieces where For sure. with, especially street pieces and not just dissing it and <laughs> right. writing it, writing it. I mean I I have a habit now of if I paint near someone and and someone has just wrote some shitty tag over someone's art who they spent obviously a ton of money and a ton of time painting a nice piece. Mm-hmm. And if I can fix it, I just fix it. And I don't mm. tell the artists and I'm not even going to mention, you know, I've done it like four times in the last couple of years um, where if I had the colors to fix their piece, I just fixed it. That's I mean, cool. There was one piece where um, a girl had painted this big, amazing portrait and some jerk came by with a roller and just drew a dick on mm. the girl's face like okay. squirting into it, like just, sure. just some shitty stuff right, right. just some young like, yeah yeah just some shit. yeah some just be, being a you know jerk and right. so mm-hmm. i got a ladder and got up there and just and blended it all out and got rid of it so and then never told her <laughs> so cool. you know you know just it just didn't make and i'm, I'm not even really great friends with this person you know mm-hmm. i don't mm-hmm. it's not like whatever and, and, and i didn't do it for her i did it because fuck that guy right yeah for sure whoever did it you know what i mean so, I, you know, I, there's a big difference between putting a throwy over a throwy. Right. And then, uh, and then, yeah, I've always had a, a, that always annoyed the shit out of me when like graffiti artists go for murals. Cause like, who are you fighting against? Like, this is an artist we're talking like whenever in that graffiti culture, you know, I, uh, they're like, Oh fuck murals and all this. And you're like, why? Like, <laughs> Why, why not uh, fuck the government? Yeah. Why not fuck the Yeah, whatever. Police, it's you know like, I mean? this is just an artist trying to put their art up. You're doing the same thing. Right. You know, like, don't pretend you're doing something different. Uh, well, I know. mean, there's the element of illegal stuff. You yeah, know yeah. I mean, and I, you know, and I, I, you know, I get the adrenaline of doing the illegal stuff. For sure. That, but that's mm-hmm. what, I, I mean, I can't speak for anybody else, but when I was doing graffiti back, you know, and I was garbage i was horrible i wasn't i was never a good I, you know there's a lot of great graffiti artists mm-hmm. out there and when i was doing graffiti in the 80s and 90s i i wasn't really great because i wasn't a great person i was right. you know i was strung out and out of my mind and so mm-hmm. um that my art reflected that mm-hmm. and so, um, so so is that your is that how you kind of got into art was through graffiti no um Art, to go way back, um, art was kind of like when I was a kid was like my only like kind of escape. I, I had some really mm-hmm. kind of like crazy violent stuff happen to me um, and my mom when I was young uh, mm. by my stepfather. And mm. and uh, I kind of used that stuff as an excuse to be a lunatic for mm. like three quarters of my life. Um, and consequently ended up spending about 18 years uh, in the penitentiary. Um, wow. From just being, years, wow. For, for just being kind of like a, a crazy drug addict, you know, criminal type, you know. Right. Um, nothing, you know, nothing, you know, when I was, before I fixed my life, I used to glamour, yeah, I was this amazing crook, whatever. And <laughs> it's not the truth. I was just a, you know, stupid drug addict trying to get more drugs. Right. And so yeah. I would do whatever I could do um, to get them. Yeah. And whether it was selling it or, you know, stealing stuff and, and trying to sell it to get more drugs. And so it's just nothing to be proud of. And, and, uh, 
and I got it in my head because this stuff happened to me that the world owed me something. And it's not the truth. Mm. You know, mm. the world doesn't owe you shit. For if sure. If you want to have something with your life, you got to work for it and you yeah. got to get out there and, and put in the work and, and earn your life. Yeah. And mm. some people get lots of stuff given to them. And I know lots of guys who get stuff given to them and they still never have shit. Right. Like, like really of substance. And yeah. there's lots of guys who get stuff and, and girls who get stuff and then they make lots of really cool stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's, even if you're born into something, you, um, the mark you leave on the world can be nothing. For and, sure. Right. And the same, and on the other side of it, you can be born with nothing. And if you work really hard and, and hopefully things move your way, then you can have, a, you can make a great mark on the world. And yeah. So, yeah. Um, like, and then when, so when I would go inside, I would draw all the time with, you know, you always really have a ballpoint pen and pencils to draw with. And so I would practice that stuff and sometimes send it out to people or whatever. And, oh, know, when you were locked up. Yeah. Right. So that was kind of a little escape for the, for me uh, there too. And um, <laughs> with the first time I really painted with paint, so I was in Pelican Bay and there, they had an um, arts and corrections program up there. And this guy, oh, Grant, wow. Grant Moody, who, if I ever get a chance to tell him, you know, tell him really thank you because he not only gave me an opportunity to paint and it was really funny. He said, uh, we started drawing. He asked the class to write down on a piece of paper. What, what is it? You, what's your goal? What, what, what's your goal to do? Mm -hmm. And you know, I was still, this is pre me fixing my life and getting mm -hmm. my brain right. And he, I wrote down, I'd like to sell a drawing one day for a million dollars. And he's like, that's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, I, I was there for a while. And so he, you know, he gave me a bunch of paints and then he started, you know, giving me more and more. And like, he would give me more studio time than other, like he let me go in there by myself and just uh -huh. paint and paint. And by the time I left, he, he told me, he says, you, you can do anything you want to do. I take uh -huh. back what I said when we first met with, you know, that there's, <laughs> there's nothing you can't do. And, and it was the most, it, I, I would love to say that was the beginning of me fixing my life. But it wasn't. I went out there and the lunatics a whole bunch more and then <laughs> got to the point where my last time I got arrested, I the uh, judge, I had just done some really, like for, like I, I stole a car from the Audi dealership here in San Francisco. Uh -huh. and <laughs> But I'd done, I'd had so many times in and out of jail. So it wasn't like I went in 18 years I, and I got out and I fixed my life. Right. I was just a dummy. You know what I mean? I would mm. get, I just didn't see a way out of it. Once I got in that thing where I was just this guy, mm -hmm. right. I just never thought I could be anything more than like a drug addict criminal type. For and, sure. and it's not the truth. So the just what I want to say about all this is I'm hoping that people can hear if you're in a situation where you're either, you know, a drug addict or you're in a violent relationship or whatever the thing is you're in, there's a way out. For there's sure. somebody who can help you or you can find your way out of these things. You, and, and, and I didn't know that until this happened. And so the judge, I went into a program in, in San Mateo County Jail called Choices and then met some really amazing people who were graduates from this place in San Francisco called Delancey Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really only went to that program because someone said, hey, they have art supplies up there. I was drawing my thing. <laughs> yeah. And they said, hey, if you'd like to draw, they have this program that you can go up there and every day they draw on these t-shirts and you can paint all day. And I was like, oh, rad, uh -huh. that sounds better than the other jail part. You know? yeah. So I applied to go in and I went up there and they were like screaming at people and they're like trying to help them fix their lives. And I'm like, this is bullshit. This is never going to work for me you mm. know, because I didn't believe I could be anything different. So mm. I ended up staying in that program for almost two years in county jail. Mm. And <laughs> I, I started to believe, you know, a little bit that I might be able to change. Not for sure. But I knew that if I stayed there, I might have a way to get out. Yeah. Right. And so I finally got my day in court and the judge, the guy named Judge Parsons, who another person who I'd like to say his name out loud when I can, because he gave me the opportunity to fix my life. He says, well, you can either go to prison for 12 years or you can go to Delancey Street for two years. And I was like, I can do that. Math. <laughs> I can do that math. I'll take two, your honor. Yeah. For sure. You know, and I didn't really believe it was going to do anything. Uh -huh. But I thought, well, I'll go and if I, if I don't like it, I can just walk out. You know, uh -huh. It's an easier <laughs> way to escape, whatever. And, and, <laughs> and I ended up staying for five years because I loved it and I loved oh. the people and I loved the ideology and I loved the, the whole philosophy of, you know, each one teach one and, and, mm. and teaching people how to be a the best, better version of themselves every single day. So it's like, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. So, cause when you've been an asshole your whole life, <laughs> right. And you go to a place where you're expected to be the better, the best version of yourself every single day. And every time you're not, 
someone's going to be telling you about it huh, huh. In, a, in, a, in a really loud and full of curse words way. <laughs> and, uh, it's and, like boot camp. <laughs> sort of, yeah. But it's all, but it, but all the people who are there are residents. So it's completely, right. except for the, the founder, Mimi Silbert, who has her double PhD in psychology and criminology from Berkeley. Mm. Everybody in there is a, is a resident who, huh. who's either, who was either like me or worse um, at some point in her life. And it has the reputation for turning jerks into just, reg- you know, they don't, they, of course, they, I'm a good, great example of what it can be at this point in my life, but they, mm-hmm. there's a ton of other examples with chief of you know, fire departments to people who are on the arts commission to all kinds of different stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you're on, if you've ridden a tour bus in San Francisco, 90% of the people who are driving those things right now are Delancey Street graduates. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So they'll teach you, you know, job skills. You have to learn, you know, four or five job skills and things mm-hmm. like that. And, and more importantly, they just teach you how to just be a regular, hardworking, honest decent human being which right. which hmm. most people like you guys i'm sure are, you know just do because it's just natural mm. <laughs> you know to just be hard working and honest and nice but if if you've gotten into a rhythm i mean i'm you know, sure. 50 years old 51 years old now and i had been being a, a practicing lunatic for like 38 years yeah uh being just decent and regular just seemed like so difficult and yeah. so i'd stayed two years and i was like ah I need to stay long. My sister came and she's like, when are you going to, you know, then I was like, I don't know, but I'm not ready. I'm still crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm better, but I'm, I'm, I, I don't think that I'm, so I stayed until I, you know, I was ready. You Damn, know, that's and, impressive. Thanks. Yeah. I, it really know, is. Yeah. I, I grew up with uh, my dad being just kind of in and out. And I know he like, he would, you, you can justify pretty much any of your actions, you know, as a sure. human being. And so that's what he would do. And, you know, and it just didn't work out that well. So, and he, he was good for like maybe three years of his life, but sure. wow, you know, the struggles for is real. Like to, to correct those patterns and those behaviors aren't something simple. So the fact that you can do that over like, you know, and, it makes sense when you say like, "Oh, you're trying to be a better version of yourself." That 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 makes sense to me a lot because, you know, it's it's that is really seems really hard. To, that that seems like a really hard thing to do to every day actually try to be better than you were. It seems like almost impossible. Well, one of the one of the philosophies is a thing called act as if. So even if you don't think you're a better version, right. you just act as if which is basically it's another like version it, of it. sort of or just really just practicing like the mm. same way you do with right. art mm-hmm. i want to be better but you know not really that much better but if i just practice it being better mm-hmm. yeah. and practice this thing if you practice painting every day you get better and so sure. if you practice being hard working if you practice being honest that if you sense. practice being nice even when you don't want to be nice all of a sudden you just start being nice yeah. <laughs> and then you're like well that's the thing is that mm. you if you get in this you know in you know if you're in this scene where you're always being a jerk, it's just right. that's what you get expect, used to being. And then if you're hmm. in a scene where everybody's being nice and being kind, right. and then they have these, you know, without getting into deep into all the different techniques and the way they do it, is they have these opportunities where you're in a group of a bunch of people. And if if you were a jerk to me during the day, I can go in this situation and tell you about it right. in a loud hmm. version in a distance. And you, there's no, you know, threatening, and no uh-huh. threats of violence or no violence. And those are the main things that can get you kicked out. But, right. Um, it has the best reputation in the world of any you know, of, it, of its like, you know, for lack of a better term, you call it rehabilitation, but it's more like a school where they're teaching you how to just, you know, just be decent and be hardworking. Huh. And I'm, I'm eternal, eternally grateful for them. And I hope, yeah. you know, I can't wait to see a bunch of them on Friday because, you know, people will be coming from there to see me. And oh, that's awesome. It's, oh, really, wow. it's only like three blocks from Minna. So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, oh, wow. you know, there's a, we'll talk in a second. There's a there's a, a few haikus that are in the story, and one of them, um, going back to graffiti, uh-huh. is that in 1990. So Mina opened in like 1993, and when it opened, I I went in and looked at it, and I liked it, and I liked the art they showed, and right. I liked. I, there was a guy back then I can't remember his name that ran the coffee thing, and him and I used to play kungas there every mm-hmm. once in a while, and um, I never really talked about that I that I like to do art. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't really know how to talk to him about it and say hey. Can I show here, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. But I started doing graffiti around Minna. 
uh-huh. like in the mission in the south of market around that area around and you know, hoping that somehow magically they would discover me it was around 93 <laughs> it was around 94 yeah 94 and in 1994 on second mission i was doing this like kind of big character on these on these walls on this like kind of they had torn down the building and they had the, this white construction wall around it and i was doing this character on the wall and um this black crown vic pulled up and this giant steps out and it was art agnos who was the the mayor back then or he's not anymore mayor jordan was the mayor then but he was the the last mayor and he gets out and he goes don't run i just want to talk to you uh-huh. and uh and uh he says you know i've seen people doing graffiti or not doing graffiti but i've seen graffiti all over the city but i've never actually seen someone do it and mm-hmm. i just want to ask you why do you do it huh. and i told him you know i um I never went to school and I don't, you know, I can't say why everybody else does it, but um, I have no idea how to get my stuff into a gallery, into a mm. museum or whatever, but I still want the peop- the world to see my art. So this is, mm. this is why I do it. I know other uh-huh. people do it for gangs or the people do it for, you know, the vandalism or rush. just, you know, whatever, you know, get away with, you know, something to get away with, whatever. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's why I do it. And he kind of like did a physical lean back and looked at it and said, I guess it is art. And I was like, that's right, art. That's art. <laughs> so I did a, I, there's a haiku in there with that kind of that, basically that story about that with him. And, and then when I got to Delancey Street, I found out that he was a pretty verbal supporter of Delancey Street. And, you know, and it's my, and he was in office. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, you know, going full circle, it's, been, it's nice to now be showing a minute. It's really kind of emotional for me to, you know, after 25 mm-hmm. years of kind of coveting showing there and, and, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. that, that, that interaction with art and, and then going to Delancey Street, which is only you know three blocks away from from Minna, right? Um, hmm. Wow, it's it, it it feels amazing, man. <laughs> That's it's awesome. Like, uh, so, I, this is your first time showing there? Yeah, I mean, I you know I I had a little piece last month in there um, in Wonderland, oh, uh, right? Uh, uh-huh. Thing, um, and that sold before the the doors opened, which was really nice. N- made me feel great. It's a nice little omen, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, hopefully, I I ultimately I just hope people liked the stories, you know, for yeah. sure. Um, we'll see. It's you know sometimes it's hard on on a Fourth of July. We'll see how this plays out because sometimes openings on those times can be weird. But I, mm-hmm. ultimately, I'm I'm really proud of the work, and I'm and this is kind of like you know I don't really do bucket lists, but is um, it, I just really wanted to show there it's for milestone or, or something. Yeah, I really yeah. wanted to show there for a long time. That's so, awesome. Um, and um, this is honestly between my relationship with my lady Kate and my sister and my son. And, and my friends and, you know, Monty and Leon and mm-hmm. Marilyn and my friend Fendak and a bunch of people that I'm friends with. I have a, a, an amazing group of friends and, and also my peers from Delancey Street. And it, this is the best chunk of my entire life. That's awesome. At 51 years old, I'm living, you know, they always, it's become a catchphrase, living your best life. And it's not, you know, I know that there's a lot more, like right now I have this amazing uh, momentum and, you know, you can call it vibration or whatever is, is it feels like everything is like really really coming together and it is the best chunk of my life you know to you know i can say it like i'm living you know people use it as like a catchphrase now that i'm living my best life but it, uh-huh. this is the best part of my entire life and, That's awesome. and i i just feel like like immense joy <laughs> yeah and it's not you know don't get me wrong i want to just like i'm not walking on a fucking rainbow you know I mean? so th- <laughs> right. things you know this is this last year this is my first time so when i left delancey street i um i got a I, went, I came down to visit my sister and uh, i didn't really want to stay in san francisco because i have a lot of you know crazy history up here right yeah, yeah. that makes sense around being a drug dealer and being a criminal in san francisco and all the criminal element i know in san francisco um and good people and bad people who people who have burned and, and people who have, you know, whatever been a jerk to, mm-hmm. I just didn't really want to be up here. And so I went and visited my sister's place down there and the weather in San Clemente is amazing. And we went to the beach and she's like, you, you might want to stay down here. And I was like, yeah, I'll stay down here. So, you know, I always want to give a shout out to my sister who helped take care of my son when I was away and my, mm-hmm. my brother and her boyfriend, uh, it's not John, um, who I consider my brother mm-hmm. took care of my son and they, they let me stay with them when I first moved down there until I saved money enough to get my own place. And then I, I got this amazing studio. Um, that I, if, it, if I had the same kind of studio in San Francisco, I'd never be able to afford it. You know, For sure. it's got, hmm. it's giant, yeah. it's, you know, it's a giant flat with a big balcony and a, a view of the ocean for like seven miles. And it's, it sounds know, horrible. It's, and it's a, it's a, <laughs> like a, it's a, it's a nickel compared to what you would pay here. You uh, know I'm what I mean? sure. 
and I can forget to lock the doors and I can forget to lock my, <laughs> right. I don't want to say that because then someone's going to go in my house right now, but <laughs> <laughs> you show this later. So I like to do it. But, um, <laughs> I, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's a little, cons- you know, you have to learn how to kind of deal with the fact that it's, it's a little conservative down there. Orange County mm-hmm. can be, yeah. you know, a lot of yeah. military families and yeah. stuff like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, Nixon used to live there just to, you know, sum it up for you. You know, uh-huh. so, <laughs> I see. To give you an idea of yeah. you know, what kind of, you know, po- you know, I have to reel my lady and we'll go out to, you know, someplace to eat and somebody will be saying some nonsense about how much they love Trump or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. I the lady want to jump on him and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but other than that, it's, I feel so happy to, to live there because it's within striking distance of LA. And, For sure. And LA has, the most booming yeah, art scene right in, mm-hmm. in the world right now, I think, you know, and, and I, and I have a gallery there now called Avenue des Arts that, that I love and they love me. And so um, they have, you know, really big things on the horizon nice. so, that I feel really, really <laughs> proud of. And I feel really proud to be with that gallery. So what part of the city is it in? Uh, l- l- uh, the gallery. Uh-huh. It's eighth in Los Angeles, and okay. it's, it's the place where I just the the, the piece you got, that High Fructose put up, mm-hmm. uh, the monkey, is one of the four pieces that I had in that show, and and the people really reacted to it great, and they they were gone within twelve hours. I had That's four awesome. big pieces, and and, and <laughs> nice. people really seemed to respond to them, and and it, it was the first time where I, I added this new element of adding these pop Easter eggs and and adding in the historical pieces and adding the story um that story in particular was about you know disgruntled monkeys who wish they could be in the space program that's canceled <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually kind of a story about um like uh you know when you hand down a story from from generation to generation it gets kind of cleaned up a little bit just like right. american history and stuff right. like that yeah. so the monkeys don't know that their great, great, great grandfathers were murdered by us when we sent them into space <laughs> as, as, as test monkeys. All they know is that granddaddy was a, a, an astronaut. Right. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. that we That's have funny. like, now that we have, you know, Tesla and Elon Musk and, and SpaceX, you know, the, all the new, right. the, the new space travel was so exciting. So I put him on like a, a Tesla um, electric tricycle and the helmet he's wearing is the SpaceX helmet where they launched that, uh, that car into space. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and so and it's, but if you look underneath the shield and his face, he's like mad because he's like, I wanted to be an astronaut, but they canceled the program. So <laughs> I'm probably going to do a series of these different monkeys that are like, you know, still wearing the outfits and still wanting to do it. But <laughs> and, and part of that is that story was inspired by my friend, you guys know too, Alec Huxley. Uh-huh. He came out and stayed with me for Kabo. And um, he had done this sculpture with get, paying tribute to all the monkeys that were and apes that were murdered by uh, us, you know what I mean, <laughs> in, in our quest to get into space. And then I had this moment where I was like, what if they didn't know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that's where, you know, it's yeah. fun when you're inspired by your peers. I think that it's, I, sure. get, I get inspired by my peers and my, the people. I'm lucky to have an amazing network of friends. And part of that happened when, you know, I, when I got the jack going back to uh, leaving Delancey Street, I got it. I applied everywhere. When I first left there, you know, I have 48 felony convictions. And so when, you know, you're putting on, you ever have a, have a felony? And right. I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> a couple. But not even you know? 50. So I'm <laughs> going for me. <laughs> so, you know, I applied everywhere. I applied at Chipotle. I applied, you know, pick up sticks. I applied, and thank God Chipotle didn't hire me. Or else right now I'd be, <laughs> I'd be a restauranteer or something. You know? yeah. so instead of doing the life I'm living right now. But they didn't hire me. Huh. And, and I got lucky and I, I got it. It said it just said warehouse job. And I, I applied for it. And I went down there. And it was this big print house called Liberty that's mm-hmm. no longer in business now. But it's... um they made dye sublimation printing. And so I got a job there. And as soon as I walked in there, it was this giant place with all these printers and all this equipment. And I was like, this is, this is home. That's this, awesome. is, this is the job I was supposed to get. And it was, I was just hired on as a Christmas temp job worker for $10 an hour. Uh-huh. And I, I worked like, you know, 12 hours a day, every day. They had to kick me out over time. You know, I didn't care about the overtime. I just wanted, I wouldn't take any breaks. They'd say, you have to take a lunch. I said, I'm not taking a lunch. I, and I, I said, you guys want me to clean the bathrooms? I was just like trying to be the best worker they ever had. You know? yeah. mm-hmm. And they would make fun of me like during Christmas. Like I would put a $5 bill in the, you know, they have the, um, this is thankfully Delancey Street, but uh, you know, the vending machines, I would put a $5 bill in there. And sometimes I would forget to get my change and someone would steal it. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I would find someone else's change and I would take the change and I would go to, the, to accounting and say, hey, 
someone left this in the machine and like <laughs> you're turning it in i was like yeah isn't that what you're supposed to do <laughs> you know so anyway i i they end up keeping me and then i work my way up over the course of three years mm -hmm. up into you know lead guy in research and development and i hmm. was you know i started you know taking making prints and like that's how monty and i met i saw his artwork and i said hey i want to be your printmaker and mm -hmm. he kind of blew me off and didn't say anything to me and then i just <laughs> how dare i saw i saw the gallery that he liked 1 a.m or that he was showing at, and I, for Christmas, I just printed up I, something I took off of uh, Facebook, one of his, this guy that's right behind me right here. Um, uh, and I just sent it to him as a Christmas present. I said, look, uh -huh. you know, I'm not trying to, I, don't, I just want you to see what I do. And if you like this print, and if you want some more of these, I'd like to make them for you. So mm -hmm. he got in touch with me. He said, thanks, man. I can't, you know, it's, you know, it's weird. It can be weird, you know, with the new, the way things are. I love social media. I think it's a mm -hmm. great tool for artists. But it can be weird. You get hit up by weirdos all the time on there. For sure. You know, <laughs> look at my friend's page. And it's yeah, and you're like, no, Sergio, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> exactly right. You know what I mean? So I'm not going for that shit. <laughs> so, you know, and so we, Monty and I became friends. And, and, you know, and then through that, I became friends with Leon and became friends with Amanda Lynn. And all these people yeah, have, have, enriched, group of people. have enriched my life. And Irene and, sure. and Olivia from Lunarian and Micah from... Uh, 111 and that happened because it could be, it's, it's all been because of these people who are who i admire and yeah. and, the, and you as well man you, you know, yeah, i'm glad you. to meet you sergio and <laughs> you know i feel so lucky to have this i'm uh, this peer group that i'm building because that's part mm -hmm. of what yeah. i learned at blanche is to have these peers that you haven't you know you feel like you have in common who not only just i like part of this going back to leon and you guys talking to, i like that you guys talking about this thing and and, mm -hmm. and i like when people give kind of critiques of your work or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and talk about the work. And for and sure. So it's, yeah, I feel really lucky to have all that going on in my life. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good. That's cool. So now you're, now you're present day. So this is, this is your first solo show you said? Um, it's not, it's my, uh, third, third, fourth, one, two, three, fourth solo show since I left Delancey Street. Oh, okay. And I know that that, to, honestly, that's not the right way to do it. <laughs> I think you're supposed to like build it up and have a, like a rad solo show. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, mm -hmm. I, what happened was I was, I started making art when I left uh, and I, I was working two jobs. I worked at uh, the print house. I got a job waiting tables and all the money from waiting tables went into art supplies and making prints to send to artists who I wanted to have clients. Mm -hmm. Um, like samples. So I, I don't drink, I don't use drugs. Uh, so I just figured if I did drink, I'd probably spend about $100 every weekend on booze. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. people do regularly do, yeah. like very often or more. And so I would use that much money for my waiting tables to send out samples to different people. Or I'd go, my sister and I would go to LA and I would go to uh, Think Space and a few other galleries and, and I would go up to artists who I liked and if I knew they had an opening or I'd go to like... Um, it was Mary Karnowski Gallery back then. Mm -hmm. Like I'll use Crayola, an artist that I really like, mm -hmm. uh, as an example. And uh, I would go to his show and show up and uh, give him like some sample thing that I'd, I'd worked on in research and development of his art, mm -hmm. and should show up at his opening and give it to him as a gift. I did it for Human. I did oh, it for. Awesome. I did it for Nose uh, Yes Nosego and mm -hmm. Saner Etam and and Curio and a bunch of guys and mm. girls. I would just show up their thing with like a gift. Yeah, I had this romantic um, idea that back in the old days, when artists had an opening, they were celebrated. They were like, mm, "Yeah, this is this kind of a romantic, romanticized vision I have of like how people adore artists." That's <laughs> not normally the case, whatever. But I, I had this idea that when people artists had openings, people would give them flowers, right? And, yeah, and uh -huh. they said, "Good job, we love uh -huh. your hard work, we love your art, blah blah blah." So right. I would show up and sometimes people would really love them and sometimes people would order make they'd be like thanks and kind of pat me on, on the shoulder and, uh -huh. and some people would, you know be very thankful and, and the other you know a couple of people were really hilarious you know like Yiz and Nasego um, and uh, and Sane or Etam uh, uh -huh. from Edom Crew right mm -hmm. Etam, that, both guys who I love their art um, mm -hmm. Sane or kind of leaned back and goes he goes you, you, you don't sell these do you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I was like no, man, it's a gift. I, I, was, I made him a bunch of stickers and a bunch of other stuff. And I said, they're, okay. they're a gift to you to give out. And then and it happened. It was great when a, a kid came up to him. He signed it and gave it to the kid. Yeah. And he looked up mm. and I go, that's why I gave it to you. 
<laughs> so that you could give it to someone else and make them happy. Some kid that can't afford your piece. Right. You know I mean, I, I did it as a gift out of respect as an artist. I'm you're yeah. a mm-hmm. guy who I respect. And, and then Yiz looked at me. He kind of did this like lean back and looked at me. He goes, what do I owe you? And I go, <laughs> you already gave it to me, man. Because I had made him this really crazy looking. I had this little acrylic block that I printed one of his old, really old school characters on all six sides. And uh-huh. the heat from the process cracked it and made all these little fusures and cracks huh. in it. And, and it made it like a gem almost with his oh, character wow. on it. So and it was a very unique piece. It was just something I did an experiment on that didn't really work out, but it mm-hmm. looked really cool. So when I <laughs> gave it to him, I have this picture of him kind of like, turning it like it's a diamond yeah and that was the gift for me is watching his childlike <laughs> the expression on his face was very childlike and he was like turning it and, and he was going oh look at that and then it dawned on him this is weird people <laughs> don't give stuff for nothing mm. you know what i mean true, and it turned yeah. around right and that's it's unfortunate that that's that where our society is you know, right. and how maybe it's always been that way you know i don't want to blame it on the times but yeah, um, artists with names probably are used to people trying to get something out of them. For, right. And so, you know, it, don't get me wrong. If you would have said, hey, I'd love to order a thousand of these, I would have made them for him. But that wasn't the goal. The goal really was to mm-hmm. just like y- y- have that moment where he was looking at it. Because it wasn't something I could reproduce. Mm-hmm. I didn't take him something that I said, hey, I want to make these for you. I took him something that I made. Because when I first started making, do, getting into research development for the company, they had me print this white suburban family on everything. It was the same kind of stock photo that you, I got good at doing this process called dye sublimation where you use heat and high pressure to, to burn an image onto something. Oh, okay. And I got really good at figuring out the time and temperature. So that's why they put me in research development. So they'd bring mm-hmm. me like jewelry and they bring me all these different knickknacks to, to figure out the time and temperature it took to make the process happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and some would fail miserably. But when, after I'd been there about a, uh, maybe a year and a half, I asked them, I said, hey, can I... Um, start printing artist work on it instead of just printing the same family on it, um, print cool stuff on it. And then if we, you know, instead of just throwing it away, which is very wasteful, mm-hmm. I'd like to give it to the artist and who knows, they might order some stuff and we might get a new customer. Right. right. That's the way I sold it to the company. But my real goal was to like kind of meet other artists. It was my, you know, Finn goes, that's your, my friend, Finn told me that's your in. I mean, right. So, you know, sort of. Yeah. It's, it's it's like my introduction of like the, hi it's nice to meet you i know mm-hmm. you never heard of me because i've been in a cage my whole life <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean i didn't say that part but you know i mean that's the truth it's part mm-hmm. of why no one's ever heard of me yeah is because you know i was, was a jerk and i <laughs> took myself away from the world right and so i've had sure. you know it's funny I've, you know a friend a couple of friends of my my friend scepter head is a great artist down in Los Angeles said, where did you come from, dude? Yeah. Because I just started painting murals and mm. I started, you know, I put up 22 murals in Los Angeles in the last few years. And he says, when, do, have you always painted murals? Where have you, where did you come from, dude? And it's like, yeah, it's a long, long, long story. Right. <laughs> I was, I always, I, w- I kind of wanted the same thing. I was like, oh, because uh, I met you at Kabo and I just assumed you were like from that area. So then I would see you at shows. I'm like, oh, maybe he's from here. And I'm like. I've never seen him before. <laughs> right. And then kind of the same thing. And then, uh, and then some, or uh, I think Monty was like, Oh yeah, he was locked up for a bit. And I was like, Oh, for sure. Like, that makes, makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, I don't, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad to be, in, in the world and, and be doing the things that I'm doing right now. For sure. Feel, That's feel, awesome though. Yeah. I feel like that path uh, is, I said it earlier, it just is a tough thing to get out of, you know, especially like uh, the addictions that come with, you know, and those things, I feel like they're tough. So it's amazing that you actually have segued away from that, that lifestyle, which is just a brutal, you know, life in general. I yeah. Mean, I think it's, you know, I, I, I'd like to add that term, you know, Little, my theory, and it's not my, my theory, it's what I've learned in Delancey Street, is that so much gets placed on the word addiction to drugs mm-hmm. or to whatever it is. And, you know, and, and I, not, don't get me wrong, once you're strung out on some stuff, it's, it's really hard to get off the stuff. Mm-hmm. But really what I firmly believe it is that it, it isn't the drugs. Hmm. People want to blame it on the drugs. And, you know, it, it, it's the, what happens to us. And for most people, it's what happens to us when we're really young. Mm-hmm. 90, mm. 90% of the, and I've heard a lot of stories, like way worse stories than mine at, well, at Delancey Street. Mm. Um, you get an opportunity to hear other people's stories or they talk about their lives and, and, and parts of the things that you do as you're trying to fix yourself. 
Right. And what it comes down to is, is probably 90% of why people become the worst of themselves is because some really bad stuff either happened to them, they either saw it or they did it or they have guilt or shame or something happened mm. to them when they were really young and they have no fucking clue how to deal with that shit. Right. And so they start put, using using drugs right. to find to to not have to to get out of their head. And right. We were talking about that before. Getting self medicate kind of right and just numb that shit and right. and, just, yeah. and and then give yourself. What happens is is that when you become an addict, then your whole goal is to get more drugs. And so right. you just stop. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you st until you run out, stop thinking about all that shit that's in your all that stuff that's in your head, telling you you're a loser and telling you this and you're telling you that you should have done this and you shouldn't have done that and whatever it is mm. that makes you be crazy. Mm. And you know and that that thing that happened to you in your young can be, you know, depending on who you are, it can be the most traumatic thing, even if it's just like, my dad liked my brother more than me, or whatever your thing mm. is, mm. It's, it is it is what sets you on the path of doing all that. Right. So people, it's not just magic that, you know, there's tons of people who do drugs recreationally or experiment and never do it again. For sure. Do heroin, do do meth, do whatever. It's it, it's the only people who do meth, do any of that stuff one time and then it's over is because they had some shit that they said, wow, this will help me numb that shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and they start, and that's why it takes off. And then it gets a hold of even, you know, all the physical parts that go with it. But, uh -huh. uh, in, in my opinion, you know, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> For sure. but after listening to countless stories, um, my opinion is it is something that you need to talk about. So, you know, I know a lot of really great artists out there right now, uh, from David Cho to Retina to all kinds of pe people who are out there who are struggling uh, with doing all that stuff that just, mm -hmm. you know, David Cho, I, I got lucky to go to David Cho's uh, show in LA mm -hmm. and he said, you know, you got to go talk to somebody about that shit. Talk to us, like whoever it is, your psychologist or whoever your person is. If you, you know, when, if you're one of those guys who have a jillion dollars uh, and you, you have a million people try to give you drugs all the time, right. it's kind of hard to get out until you have, you, you make the step and say, you know what, fuck it. I got to go talk to somebody and fix my life. And, mm -hmm. I think he's on the right path of doing that stuff right now. He's, you know, mm. went through a lot of trauma and, you know, some self-inflicted and whatever, but, uh, you know, David seems to be on the right track, you know, mm -hmm. uh, giving back to the community and a lot of the stuff like that show was fucking unbelievable, man. It's not, I, I never saw it. it. He had a thing called the Cho show. Yeah. I heard yeah. him. I remember him getting ready to drop it or I saw him like starting to hire people or something like that for it, mm -hmm. but I never actually... It, you know, show. I can't talk about in terms of what what happened in it because you signed this, you know, to be able to do it, right? You have like to, a you, waiver, right? You have to sign. Well, you have to you have to fill out an application and tell them your life story first. Yeah. You uh -huh. send that in, which takes a big uh, act of bravery. You send that in to them, and then they look at it, and then they decide whether or not you know you're the right kind of person to come see their show. And then before mm. you come see their show, they you know please don't tell anybody because they want it to be a surprise for everybody. Oh, it's, it's not like a TV it's show. Not, yeah, no, it's it's a full immersion. Like they took over a whole building, and it's like mm -hmm. uh, several floors of like David Cho on every fucking inch of it, like on the ground in the corner, up in the ceiling, oh, on wow, you know, hanging stuff and all kinds of like interaction rooms and hmm. like. It's more stuff than I can even say because I don't know that I saw all of it because each group there was like little small groups that got to go to each you know everybody had kind of a almost different experience and then you know oh, the wow. he, he was hoping that everybody who was in there would talk about amongst themselves afterwards did you see this no I didn't see it what that happened you know what I mean so there was hmm. there was so much to it that you, you couldn't possibly see it all at one time but it was uh, it was an amazing thing but going back to the the point is that you know he talks when you come in there he says you know I I was a same thing I was telling you guys in the beginning. I was a jerk for a really long time, and now I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to make <laughs> amends by giving back and giving. Wow. You, and it was free. You got to go in there for free, and then after it was over, you got to go kind of in a green room and talk about your life. And and then he uh, send out gifts to the people who he thought <laughs> would like him. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I feel like a, a little while ago I was on a, like a gift off with him. I sent he sent me a thing and then I sent him some stuff back and then he sent me these big blankets and then that's it's awesome like, yeah, it's not a bad life to be in when you're in a, in a gift off with David Cho so no, yeah no, it's pretty awesome <laughs> yeah I'm not, I'm not mad about it that's cool no. I'm yeah. glad to hear that he's doing that because uh, I was a big fan of DVD SA his, his podcast I don't know if you ever listened to it right but uh, yeah I was curious to know what, what he did after that and it mm. seemed like he it was a super entertaining show, but he burnt a lot of bridges with it. And so uh, I was always curious as to what he was going to do after that. Was he going to spiral down even worse? But it sounds like he's 
trying to change things mm-hmm. around for for himself even yeah more. i think he's he's definitely trying to you know it's I'll, I'll take it off of him not to try to explain to what like to what all he's doing it's you know he's he, i think he's trying to make the right step in a uh, right direction but that's part of what delancey uh uh philosophy is, is that if you've done like for me i'll just say it about me that if i've done if you if you pick your hands like a scale and if on on your left hand you have all this shit you've done in your life that's horrible, not yeah. great, stealing and being a drug addict and burning your family and burning your friends and all that stuff, and you've been a, a jerk your whole life, the only way that you can kind of balance your scale is to kind of do some other good stuff. And right. so I try to like, you know, the free paintings that I do, you know, when I do my murals in L.A., a lot of people who are doing street <laughs> part, I think when going back to what you were saying about the graffiti artists, why they don't like murals, because... Um, I get it because I see a lot of people who are doing free murals, who are doing them, you know, it's, it's a great way to promote your art. And so they'll do right. these free murals, but they'll only do them where they have the best traffic and the be- they'll do them on Melrose or they'll do them, you know, in high traffic areas in, in Los Angeles where there's a lot of people who are going to see it for their, you know, hopefully to promote themselves. Right. Um, and, and I would prefer to do, if I'm going to do a free mural, not to do it for some other place that's going to get a lot out of it or me get out of it. I like to go, there's a group called Smile South Central uh, in LA that I wrote, Che, who runs that, um, who has helped me do a mural in South Central and it's a place mm-hmm. where I also fix that other mural um, and do it in places where they don't get get a lot of right. nice art and so, you know, do some fun things and I help, sure. I let the neighborhood name the piece uh, I'm, my Spanish is horrible. Pajarito Gordito is a is a, mur- is a mural about a mural about chubby birds. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I paint a lot of chubby birds, and so um, and it was fun. You know, one of my his uh, my friend's girlfriend's mom named it that because okay. it was just like six per- ch- chubby birds I, I end up animating and whatever. But mm-hmm. you know, I want to try to do, and I help my friend Ron Finley, who's I, I since I'm up here, I missed. He usually has a function every year called, called the function, where it's a community center where everybody comes together and we teach kids how to paint and guys do live painting and um, Retina comes and donates time there too. That's where I met Retina. Mm. And um, he painted alongside me uh, last, I think last year. And, and uh, they teach organic gardening for the neighborhood. And like, so you can plant like almost like the old vict- victory gardens, but these mm-hmm. are organic gardens that you p- plant in your urban neighborhood because in those, in those cities, they don't have access to, to good food and stuff. So, for sure. right. so he started doing that. And so, I tried, I, and then we, there's a couple of different events down there that talk about um, human uh, human rights issues and social justice and one called Manifest Justice and uh, Into Action. And, and they bring in some of the biggest artists in the world, like, you know, Shepard Ferry and, and Swoon and mm-hmm. uh, the Finley br- uh, brothers and, and you know, all kinds of different people who come in and um, uh, t- do paintings about you know, social justice and right. and the criminal justice system and, uh, you know, equal pay for women and all, all whatever, whatever you feel strongly about uh, uh-huh. politically and, and they're big events and they're, they're really powerful. And so I, I try to participate in as much of that kind of stuff as possible um, for them. But it's also, you know, if I'm honest, it's about me like kind of repairing my life mm-hmm. and, and kind of balancing out those scales and try to, um, Right. Do stuff that's 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 uh, good for the community, good for for the world, and good for me. Right, for sure. That's a win, win, win. Yeah. I mean, it is cool because you can kind of see in your story where uh, there was definitely a group of people who helped you out of this dark place, and then to go back and you know give back is a pretty cool thing to do. I mean, I feel like it'd probably be easy to not do that or to just try to get your shit in order. You know, like uh, I'm finally at even let me try to get my stuff in order so yeah i mean i well i I, and if i'm honest i really feel like you know i don't do it it's not the reason why i do it but it's it's the same thing is it like when you so you know when i was there part of one of the philosophies is is you're you're helping someone else if you're constantly helping them you know teach when you first get there you learn how to do a thing and then the next person, the, the next day, if someone comes in, comes in after you, and you've always been taught like how to clean the table and set the table and whatever uh-huh. the thing is, when the next person comes in, it's your job to teach them. So each one huh. teach one. So mm-hmm. okay. and by teaching them, and if you're taking care of that person and teaching them all something else, and they start changing, then then you feel better. Right. And you don't really do for it sure. for that, but it's it's this nice thing that happens. So, and I, you know, like 
like I said, to go earlier about, like, I feel like my vibration, the things that I'm doing in my life are, have this momentum right now that feels really amazing. Um, I feel like a lot of that is because of giving back. And even, right. even if it's just like the giving, when I saw you guys today, those shirts weren't for promotion. Those, right. I'm not ever going to sell those. I just made them to give because it feels, after being a, a guy who took shit my whole life, it makes me feel good to, to give out little stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> not for you know, not because you guys are doing this. I appreciate this. It's fun, and I like doing it. But um, I, I like giving those little gifts. It makes me feel happy. <laughs> for sure, yeah, <laughs> that makes total sense. I mean, uh, just yeah, serving people in general, it really does like uh, give you happiness. Yeah, yeah like I, I, I mean, it, it in religions and stuff, they always kind of talk about that as well as like the service of others is like a, you know, is rewarding to the person who serves more than the. Yeah. You, know. you would think the, I would love it if that was, if that was a, if that was a, something that was honestly chiseled in stone in, in, in the belief systems of all religion. Yeah. <laughs> that if they, if, if it wasn't I, just. I think it is. It just people decide that they'll ignore it or something. Right. You know? they, I mean, yeah, I'm not I even religious, I, I, but. Right. I feel like it gets too much into this. What, you know, it, I have my own opinions. I, I'm not sure. great on organized religion at all. So, yeah, me neither. But I have my relations. You know, I've been through a lot of really uh, serious near-death experiences in my mm -hmm. life. And, and I feel like I've been closer to God than a whole lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> like, at the gate. You know? Right. So, um, you know, I, I, like horrible accidents and car mm -hmm. accidents and, and motorcycles and, 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 you know, death wounds. You know, right. so um, I... Uh, uh, when people serve, they want to serve God by building these big churches and all this right. other stuff. You know, I don't want to get mm -hmm. into too much philosophy, but I think that it should be the people. I think that if there's a, you know, whatever God you pray to or whatever universal force you read to, I think that that person would want you to serve people less fortunate than you. And For sure. God's pretty fortunate. He can do whatever the fuck he wants <laughs> yeah. or she can do whatever the fuck she wants. She's, she's okay. She's going to be all right. Yeah. You don't need to serve her. Serve your community. I think that's what God would want. Or that's what I think. Whatever religious person you believe, uh, believe in, they would want you to be kind to each other. For sure. And I find that so many religious groups other than going to church are not super kind. No. And they're very judgy and they're very um, uh, segregated and they, they separate each other instead of bringing each other together. And I don't think that's what any universal force would want. For sure. I think they want us to help each other grow and be better and not push each other away. And, huh. and that is my firm belief. <laughs> yeah. And I believe, it's you know. It's a pretty good belief. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it, there's lots of that stuff. You know, I mean, it, there's stuff people, why is there a cancer or why is there a this? If there's a, you know, God, we were, I was talking to Monty's roommate the other day about that. You know, why would there, you know, if there's a God, why would there be cancer and stuff? And, I, you know, I, because of my, like, really, you know, horrible um, near-death tragedies I've had in my life, um, I'm a really firm believer in when it's your time, it's your time. And I've had this last year, we've had a lot of like big famous people kill themselves, but I had mm -hmm. a person who I was becoming friends with named Greg Escalante, who, who's gone now. He, um, he, same thing with Anthony Bourdain mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. in a different way, but he's, he's the, one of the founders of Juxtapose magazine. Oh, okay. Um, and he, I met him up in, in, in LA and then he would, used to come down to San Clemente to go surfing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I'd meet him in his gallery and then we started talking and, and different stuff happened. And, um, uh, he would come down on Mondays and hang out with me and my friend Josh Poskowitz and, and have lunch. And then we'd go down, he'd, he'd get me out of my studio and we'd go down to the beach and I didn't really surf and stuff, but I would just go down there and just chill just to, mm -hmm. you know, and then the guy was fucking hilarious. You know what I mean? So I would, He's one of the best like art connectors in the history of of our modern art right now, for sure. especially the, the the genre we're in. So it's a it's a tragedy that he's gone, but it was it's a tough pill to swallow when it's someone you're close to. It, right. it, it was his time, whether he did it that way or another way. It was his, I. This is my opinion. It's mm. not a fact, and I don't know. You know, whatever. I don't. I don't get a million DMs about. <laughs> you don't know shit about anything, but I, it's my opinion. After you know, I got stabbed in my heart. I, I had open heart oh. surgery, and and, and I was pronounced dead at the hospital. So I I feel 
it wasn't my fucking time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, you know, I died on, on my lungs, filling up blood and, and drowning, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it just wasn't my time. And I've been in car crashes that you wouldn't believe in motorcycle accidents. You wouldn't believe it wasn't my time. And it's a tough pill to swallow when a, when a child gets murdered in, in South Central and, and, wow. and, and, yeah. and, and or a child gets in, in war and, and all the different crazy stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's, it is my opinion, as sad as it is, is it was their time. And I hope that hmm. they get a chance to come back as a human being or whatever you believe in. Right. Or they get to go on to another plane, whatever it is. But the 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 laws of nature can be brutal. Mm -hmm. Whether you watch a gazelle get killed by a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a feline or whatever. For you know, sure. You know, that it's it, it 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 can be brutal, but it's when it's your time, it's your time. So what you do on earth while you're here, while you you can make it heaven on earth if you can. Right. And you can make your mark and make and and you know really do some good, and that's what I would like to do. I want to continue to tell stories, and, and some of my stuff has some, um, some. I'm trying to be a little. When I first started trying to do, um, my art for, uh, talking about social issues and stuff, mm -hmm. I, I was more like, um, opaque. Or uh, just obvious what it is. Like I, the one I did for Manifest Justice, I did of Walter Scott, the guy who was murdered in in uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. He got pulled over on a for a parking violation, and then he took off. I don't know what the cops said to him, but he took off running. Uh -huh. And he didn't. He no felonies. No, he didn't have anything like that. His worst thing is he didn't pay his child support. Uh -huh. um, that's why his license was, was suspended. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And he takes off running, and the, the officer shot him a bunch of times in the back. I don't know if you guys remember this story. The, oh. the cop ended up having to go to jail. Yeah, him. thank goodness. It's like the one where they actually like they had him video. Yeah, the they, cop. yeah, they had him video. They, I mean, they had him dead to rights. So the guy yeah. took off running. The guy shot him a bunch of times in the back and murdered him, and then threw a, a, a taser. On, like, yeah, that's oh, right. I remember uh, like this he tried one. to frame yeah. him. They had it all on on film. Yeah. So I mean, oh, that guy got arrested. Yeah, the, the guy's in, he's in jail. He's in prison. Oh, that's yeah. a, that was for sure. Right. Like, but there's a lot of them that are for sure. But the, unfortunately for this one, they they, yeah. they, they did the right thing. They yeah, for prison. sure. So, mm -hmm. um, there's lots of different situations. But in this one, the guy was like, it, it was just horrible. So I did a little piece of on acrylic where he was running away. And then the way that the light shined through it, it made it look like he was laid down on the ground after that. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to find, in the last pieces that I did at that last show, I was trying to find ways to talk about social issues in a, in a more uh, not easter egg but like a uh, less obvious way mm. yeah okay some subtlety to it yeah like you know even even the one that we were talking about earlier about the um like the wu-tang clan and, and yeah we should probably bring that up right now sure. yeah yeah so so this is part of the mini show it is uh so a lot of the paintings you've been doing recently have had like uh the center figure is is uh, like almost animal based right so uh -huh. you have like a uh a, a chimpanzee like you were saying earlier with like a space helmet right or a kangaroo with wings or something like that right. um and uh yeah and so you you did this uh this giraffe and he's kind of got his head popped out of uh, this van mm -hmm. and this guy's driving it and it has uh, like it's it's kind of like a rust bucket and it has <laughs> the uh the Toys R Us symbol on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the backwards R. And uh, the giraffe is wearing a red scarf, and it's... Um, it's obviously like Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, there's headlights on, and it kind of looks like it's uh, the sun set a, a little past the like scene. Dusk, yeah, yeah, dusk. yeah, dusk, and uh, it looks like he's taken off somewhere. Like the, the wind, yeah, the scarf's blowing in the wind, mm -hmm. and... It, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, when it's, it's like those movies where they're like freeing an animal kind of, it yeah. kind of has that feel <laughs> right? where like the animal is, uh, this guy has like, uh, the guy, whoever's driving the car, like is freeing this giraffe. And then there's like this, uh, little tiny, uh, Easter egg or whatever you want to call it, where he has like a, in his pattern work, he has the, like the Wu-Tang symbol. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a cool piece. The, uh, is there a reason why you've been, uh, using animals as like the, 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 the main figure to have the story you tell? No, I mean, I, I, I really love, I've always loved, I, you know, to be honest, I love doing portraits, Uh huh. but there's a level of stress 
Amanda Lynn and I were talking about yesterday. There's a level of stress that goes into doing figurative work. I hope For sure. you understand it as well because your your paintings are beautifully done. And uh, I, with animals, there's less stress to be honest. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if the nose is off a tiny bit on an animal, it just looks like a little bit of style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, and I get lost in the fur. It's very meditative to me to do all those jillions of hairs. You know, it can be really annoying when you're on a on a time in deadline, mm-hmm. but, um, that, that becomes very meditative to me to, to do all the fur. I like, mm-hmm. I like doing that. And I like, I've always liked to do animals. I like to do the other ones too, but, um, I, I find more joy doing the animals. Um, and the, the stress comes from, of course, we're all experts on what a human being looks like. Right. We, we've known what a human being looks like since we came out of one. You know, right. And the second we came or we're born you open your eyes, you're, you're looking at humans. And even if you can't draw, a squiggly line, you can look and say, that nose isn't right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. You know, what's wrong with her ears or what's yeah, wrong with her hands? Her because we, close right, something. we know, even if you don't, you can't put your, you know, put a description on what's wrong that you just know. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not off. Unless you're really stylizing your, um, your, your figurative work. Mm-hmm. If you're trying to do likenesses, um, right. there's somebody who's going to say, that shit isn't right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so sure. I, I like that challenge and I like doing, you know, that's why when I first started painting murals, I was just, I was only doing Muhammad Ali and the Prince. They're like one of the first ones I did, I did when Prince passed, I did okay. Prince and I did, and it wasn't, you know, yes, th- those are fun to do. Um, the Muhammad Ali was a commission and, and different things like that. Uh, uh, but it's, it's a challenge to do someone who everybody knows what they look like, because right. if it's not right, they're going to be like, that doesn't look right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. So I like that challenge. I'm not doing those as much anymore. Um, and I'm now trying to tell my, you know, this new story because mm-hmm. I, I liked it. And, um, that kind of, that kind of evolved from that. For, there's a piece in the show that people will scratch their head when they look at it. Um, it's the very first one that I did. It's, I, I haven't, so I didn't sell it in the first solo, the vaudevillian, um, and it is about the vaudevillian. He's the guy who's driving that van. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And he's the vaudevillian, and his girlfriend's named Serena. She's a little, mer- little teeny tiny mermaid. <laughs> it's based on a, um, a legend from Guam about a, a girl whose mom turns her into a mermaid on accident. She, <laughs> she sends her down the river to do her chores, and instead of doing her chores, she jumps in the river, and she's playing in the water. And then when the godmother comes along looking for her, she says, where's Serena? And the, and the mom says, Oh, that child, she's probably down in the river swimming. She should just be a fish. And the godmother uh-huh. says, well, let the part that belongs to me stay human. And in that uh-huh. moment, their power of the words turned her into a mermaid. And then she swims up the river and says to her mom, why did you do that to me? We can never be a, a, together again. And she swims away to never be seen again. That's the legend. Wow. That's the myth from Guam. I and mean, I found that from a friend. There's a bunch of like weird things, like because my mom's Pacific Islander, she's always <laughs> telling me crazy stories about things, and I'm always like, "That's crazy that you guys were you." Because the other day I asked her about religion. Uh-huh. I said, "Was there was there anything before like missionaries came and kind of made everyone on the island Christian?" And she said, oh, yeah, well, my village, we used to have this octopus god. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, what? And, and then she said, like, yeah, he used to come and talk to the elderly people and tell them what was right and wrong. And then the octopus told them that there is a person coming that's greater than him. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, but that's yeah. great. I, I would love to do a painting of that. So I love so this. Is, those are the those are the little things that you just stumble upon that are fun. So like right. like with the Wu Tang thing, that was um, when I added the Wu Tang into his fur, like a tattoo. It wasn't on like I didn't plan that. I, I right. made this picture based on it was a story. I drew this van. I put the you know and I, and I wanted to put Jeffrey in it to give. I had this idea that what happens to Jeffrey now that. Toys right. R Us is oh, closed. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is like the Toys R Us sign kind of gives you a hint that that's who he is. Right. That's, that's his character. He's, right. he's Jeffrey from uh, Toys R Us. Right. And but, so I imagine what happens to that guy now that they're closed, they're going right. to put him in a zoo. And so my character, the vaudevillian helps him escape. Right. And then the first thing he does now that he's out, he goes, because he, 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 he couldn't be a Wu-Tang fan while he was the, while he was Jeffrey over all the kids. Right. He couldn't tell everybody. So now, <laughs> now that he's out, he went and got a Wu-Tang tattoo and he's like, you know, it's all in his fur and so you know it's it's a lot of fun because it was an accident i i was just really looking for reference photos of giraffes and look 
they kind of studying their patterning and I noticed uh-huh. that a bunch of them were kind of shaped like the W uh-huh. and then it was hilarious because I did that. I made that painting about him and then my birthday was on the 8th of this month and I, we got t- we got tick thanks. We got <laughs> tickets to go see the Jizza in this venue that's oh, smaller than this garage. I saw that video. I was yeah. like, damn. It was so good. My brother, John, <laughs> got, he says, you want to go see the Jizza? I was like, do I? It was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like $25 and it was the Jizza and it was uh, um, Old Dirty Bastard's son uh-huh. was there. Oh, okay, and, he's, sure, yeah. and he looks just like Old Dirty Bastard and he wow. sounds, and he was like, oh, doing all <laughs> yeah, the yeah. crazy shit that, that, that Old Dirty Bastard done. It was epic and they that's were awesome. he was like within an arm's distance of me it was so small he was making fun he's like this shit is hella small and, like, <laughs> yeah. and you know he clowned about it a few times and then he yeah. walked out into the crowd and it was pitch black and you couldn't see you couldn't see anybody really because it was so dark in the crowd because they had mm-hmm. all the lights on the stage mm-hmm. and then you know we always make fun of technologies what people do i love technology but <laughs> people are like oh your phones your phones your phones what was really cool is that everybody pulled out their phones to record him in there and then the flashlight on their phone lit him up so there's part of it if you stroll through that on my instagram Uh you'll see him Uh in the third frame in the second frame you see him going this is i gotta get this exciting we gotta do this and he walks into the crowd just and everybody just kind of mobs around him he's just like rapping in the middle everybody and then everybody whips out their phone to record him in the crowd and it lights him and everybody else up and it's so it's it was really epic and i and i love it so it was so funny that it came right after this thing um, that I got to go see him because I, I, you know, I've liked the Wu Tang forever, but I've never yeah. seen him in concert. So I would love to have seen the whole group, but it was, I mm. like the Jizz a lot. And, yeah, and Jizz is actually my favorite. Jizz and ODB <laughs> yeah. are both my favorite, but I was like, Jizz is like clean, technical. Yeah, rapping. and he, right. Yeah, and then just the and way he did, you ODB's saw it. He's like the opposite. Right, he's like wild. Yeah, know? it's like he, you can't ever replicate a rap like his because the way he stretches words was always so weird. Right. Well, I don't know. His son does, you know, maybe it's in the DNA, but his son, like, it was amazing. Like, right. His son is really Probably. close to like, you know, listen to his dad do it his whole life. And mm-hmm. You know, and not, you know, you see people who are relative, you see they have the same mannerism. For the sure. Same, same kind of voice inflection. So I'm sure, you know, it's not real difficult for him to copy it. Yeah, probably it, not. But it hmm. was, yeah, it was like getting to see him like when he was in his teen, in, not, maybe he's in his 20s now. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm trying, I like to like reimagine there's another piece that's in the show. That's kind of the story about Dumbo. Um, uh, and, but it's also about me. So it's, uh, and so in, in these, I did give you the second one. So then what was the title of this? That, that one is take called Jeffrey, taking Jeffrey home. And then Mm -hmm. the, the next to it is the same size 40 by 40. I wrote a haiku, um, I wrote three haikus for the story. The one haiku is about me and Art Agnos on second admission. And, and then the second one I wrote was about this one about Jeffrey. And it, I think it goes, um, uh, Wu-Tang neck tattoo is the first line. And the second line is an excellent escape plan. And the third line is Jeffrey hates the zoo. And so in a haiku, uh-huh. it's five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. So right. working that puzzle out was really fun. And I'm sure that there's some writers out there and some great haiku writers who are going, that, that haiku is garbage. <laughs> but where, where that came from was that I have a couple of friends in L.A. Um, one's name is Wordsmith and another guy's name, he goes by Trusty Scribe. And, and we're, both of them are great writers. Mm-hmm. Like they worked in the industry in Los Angeles as writers, mm-hmm. and then Wordsmith started doing street art as just kind of like a hobby. Mm-hmm. And he would take his, he'd write these really uh, kind of inspirational quotes, and he he developed this stencil of a typewriter, and then he would kind of make this page coming out of the typewriter okay. and write these inspirational quotes. And one of them mm-hmm. really helped me one time. I was driving someplace, and I'd gone to a couple galleries, and the galleries were kind of dicks to me. And I don't know, whatever the case was, I you know, right. I didn't have the night that I was hoping it was going to be. And I was kind of down and I was like, it was in the middle of me starting to be a full-time artist after the uh-huh. place I worked at closed. And and I was feeling like I was kind of running out of money. And, and like I was like, this is this fucking sucks. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. This is the best part of my life. But to get right. to this point, this last you know year and a half, uh, thanks for the positivity of my girlfriend and my, and my sister and everybody around me, I, mm-hmm. I, I kept going, right. but I, I, I had some real moments of doubt. And luckily every time someone like Amanda Lynn or my friend Findak or, or someone would throw me, they would give me, they would make orders for me on prints or, mm-hmm. or a job would come up for a mural. My friend Tori got me a mural job that gave, they made it possible for me to, you know, spend all my time in the studio for the last, you know, four months making mm-hmm. these paintings for the show. And, um, 
the, the universe has thrown me these things, but there's been right before it happens, there's been a bunch of times where I was really doubtful and kind of like, you know, what the fuck am I doing? And one of the times that when it was happening, I was pulled to this light and Wordsmith had one of his inspirational quotes. I'm like, like you can, what I can't, I, I wish I could remember word for word what it is, but, but the gist of it is you can do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep going. You know what I mean? It's going to be all right. Right. And so, you know, he, he he has turned writing into an art form, street art form, um, and he's doing really great, traveling all over That's the world. Cool. And then my friend Ari has become a he goes by trusty scribe and he says, I'm hey Brett, did you know I'm painting? I was like, Are you, are you painting? <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you know, you're That's right. The right response. You, you, know, you, you know, I go, You're right. You know, it's true. It's art. It, I consider it a form of street art, but it's not, hmm. you know, and so I was like, Wow, if they can be painters, I could be a writer. You know what uh, I mean? Okay. So I'm not good. I know I'm not a great writer. You know what I mean? So I never, I have a good, I think I have a strong imagination, but I, most of the time I don't know where the fucking comma goes for mm -hmm. sure. And I have to have my lady and my sister correct. <laughs> I don't ask them. And sometimes I'll ask them beforehand if I'm smart, but most of the time they'll be like, hey, Brett, that word, that's not how you spell that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, that's how I feel all the time. <laughs> So I, the, the haikus I'm writing them with the with the knowledge that they're probably not the best haikus, and I you know I'm, I'm trying. I think that they're witty, and I think that they're they're, they're fun, and and mm -hmm. the one about our diagnosis I think is very powerful because it's it's it, it, I, next to it I have a metal uh, thing, and my friend Courtney Carter wrote like the gist of my life leading up to him catching me and about Delancey Street and like that. Mm -hmm. She, and so I've employed the help of there's a lot of really smart. Uh, all the people who helped me fix my life really that were our smart, amazing women. Uh -huh. you know, the people who run Delancey Street, all the peer group, uh, the primary people in the peer group that have been there for a really long time and the lady who runs it, uh, Mimi Silbert, are all strong, smart, powerful women um, mm -hmm. who I admire very much. And so even in this whole series, throughout this series, I've um, been leaning on not only my sister who's smart and, and strong and my, and my girlfriend, Kate, who's extremely smart and strong. Mm -hmm. Um, but also a couple of friends of mine who are great writers and great, uh, literary geniuses. Um, mm -hmm. my friend Courtney Carter's an amazing writer. So she wrote my, helped me write my art. I, I, I wrote the gist of it and then she made it make sense for me. And then, and then like my life story basically too, for that thing, I wrote, wrote it out and I talked to her about the story and then she made it, put it in some cohesive sense. And, and then my friend Tori, who's a, you know, she's getting her PhD in, you know, literature in, on the East Coast. I, I wrote her, there's a painting that's in the show that I don't have a photograph right now that I haven't posted because I want to surprise my sister. She said, can you just leave one painting you don't put on a fucking Instagram? And I was like, <laughs> I love posting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I saved one that no one has seen that you'll see, you have to come to the show to see and then I'll- That's cool. Know, um, That's a good idea either way. <laughs> right. And in and, and that one, the, the girl, Serena, is, is really strong. She's doing this feat of physical strength that mm -hmm. it seems impossible in that painting. And and at the same time, she's reading a book. Mm. And I wanted her to be smarter than me. Because <laughs> if you ask me which book she should be reading, it'd be some stupid Tom Clancy movie or book or some, <laughs> you know, something, <laughs> something moronic. So um, I, I contacted Tori and I asked her, you know, what are your, what are your favorite you know, books? You know, what, very specific. Like who else could you fucking ask besides a PhD in, in, right. in, in, in this subject? Uh, what's your top five favorite pre 1930s books and <laughs> yeah. she gave me a list and then i looked them all up and then I, I landed on one about a feminist named mina loy and um so i added the title of that book and, and it's small it's like the size of a dime so painting mm -hmm. the title it was really challenging <laughs> with acrylics to paint right. this little tiny title on this mm. like smaller than a dime book mm -hmm. okay um, yeah but the poem is really you know it's great and it and, it, and, and i got lucky because I picked that poem and then she said you know that poem is perfect for your painting because I showed her you know the image of the painting she says because it's about the road that you know the title of your show is caravan and so many of your things are the road less traveled and it's about mm -hmm. you know either escaping or or going right. go, going to this destination and so she said you picked the perfect one so I mm -hmm. I added the title on that one from the I ordered the book for 12 bucks from Amazon Thank you. you know, sometimes I hate Amazon. Sometimes I love it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but then I read the poem, and I, it, it, you know, this is how much smarter she is than than I am. Is that I, I had to <laughs> Google like four words in the poem just to get through it. You know, just to understand it. They're like, I'm all what? It was like this crazy word for sleepwalking. 
Like, I'm oh, like, what is that German or something? <laughs> it's an English word that's a, a really rare word for sleepwalking. You know, uh-huh. and like some other words like that in the in the title of the book. You do. I think a lot of people. Hopefully, my, I should tell Micah before he makes the, the labels. Don't spell correct me because that's the correct spelling of that word. All right. It's a very rarely used spelling of that word. Like, I, okay, my ladies all said, "Is that how you spell that?" And I was like, "I don't know." Think. Thank goodness for Google. So yeah. I Googled it. Yeah. And it is. It's a really rare spelling for one of the words for the title. Google. So. Oh, praise Google. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love the age, you know, as an artist, I love the age we're living in because any reference material you need. For sure. It's twice, two things. Some of the cars that I used in this show are, uh, most of the cars um, I used in this show are ones that I took photos of the car because where I live, it's like a time warp. Mm-hmm. We have car shows in San Clemente, and people who live in San Clemente have these amazing hot rods. Right. They might probably have that in Santa. I'm sure it's big in Santa Rosa, too. Yeah. They have all those mm-hmm. crazy cars. Mm-hmm. And then whenever they do, I always take pictures of it, and, I, and I'm trying to like take the same angle all the time. Like, mm-hmm. I like to draw cars, but I don't want my paintings to be about the car. I want the car to be kind of like part of the scenery. Okay. okay. And I yeah. want the characters to be the story. Uh-huh. Um, I've, I've always loved cars, but you know, I've, I've always liked to draw them, and I can do, draw them from whatever angle. But I've tried to, I'm trying to pick this one angle so that it makes it kind of more like the scenery than it is the story. Huh. Um, hmm. And I want that's that's you know that's why I've picked this particular angle. It's kind of this a reoccurring angle in the different paintings. Mm. Oh, okay. And then now I'm now I'm having fun as I take them, and and you know it's funny Mont, going back to Monty when I first came up here to hang out with Monty and Monty. hashtag make Monty famous. <laughs> yeah. I went, well, we went, I went up, <laughs> I, I took Monty spray painting after I left the Lancy street, which made Mimi both mad at me. And she's a, she's runs the Lancy street and loved me. And, and I came up and Monty and I went down to this, this place, a graffiti wall that I started back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. It's a place where the train goes into the Amtrak goes into the tunnel okay. out near 17th or something like that in Mariposa. Uh-huh. Um, uh, there's a big tunnel down there and we used to throw these parties back then, back in the nineties, like rave parties. Yeah, I think I know sure. that tunnel you're go, talking about. Go down there and, and there's, and when, when I first went down there, that wall had a few little small little tags on it, but it was this, this, the walls were made out of this like super porous concrete mm-hmm. that you could just, like a whole can and it would be a dot right yeah so me and my friend bobcat took this airless sprayer way back then even back then i was using airless sprayers um and i had an airless sprayer and a generator and my friend worked at dun edwards who would give me mist tents for like a dollar a gallon so i'd get five gallons for five dollars so i'd go down i went down there with the generator and sprayed that whole wall with like three layers of just like crazy would be really expensive normal paint so that that wall could be painted on Mm. And so that's a place where we can go practice because it's a great spot because there's no way for cops to get to if the cops can only see you when you drive across the top. Mm. And right now there's a it's a it's a really a, not too many people it doesn't get a lot of internet uh, play but it's a great place for the young writers to go practice their their throwies and different mm. stuff like that and the trains never trip off people and it's I think it's very rare that people get caught down there mm-hmm. um, and so. Monty and I went down there when I came back up here the first time and I painted a giant fuck cancer. Like, I kind of extended it. was like, fuck cancer because <laughs> the Mimi's had to battle with that and, 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 mm. and a bunch of people in my life from my grandmother to my grandfather to my mother to people who I loved in my life have passed from cancer. So I have For strong sure. feelings both about that and about Mimi and about um, all of it. And so I painted this giant fuck cancer on the thing and, right when Mon- and Monty painted a few characters and when we were leaving, these kids walked up and like, hey. Allegedly, by the way. Huh? Oh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's gone now, so I don't care. Um, these kids walked up and they're like, hey, what do you write? And I was like, I don't know. Fuck cancer, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I, you know, and that's, they said, oh, well, someone too is not going to be happy. You went over shit. And I was like, I don't give a fuck about that guy. I said, I started this shit. I said, whether you believe me or not, I started this wall fucking 20 something years ago. I said, so if you paint, you can paint over right now. I took, I filmed this. I did this for someone who's, who's battling this shit and I want her to see it. And when I showed mm. it to her, she, she busted up laughing and she shaked her finger at me. Don't do illegal shit. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't put all this work into fixing your life for you to go out there and do that. So when people are like, when these writers that are out there and you can, I don't care if you hear me, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me, why aren't you doing graffiti? Fuck that shit. I got 48 felony convictions. I'm not doing nothing illegal no more For ever. Sure. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. give a fuck about what you think about me. My street cred is what it is. I don't give, you know, I'm yeah. not trying to prove shit to nobody. I don't yeah. have to, I don't have to do another crime the rest of my life. I've done enough for fucking a million people. I don't want to <laughs> never do it again. I'm not proud of the ones I did. And, and I liked doing graffiti when I did it, but I'm, you know, you want to go do graffiti, go do graffiti, have fun, knock yeah. yourself out. And I think it's, I, I think it's fun. Uh, I think it's whatever. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing no more crimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm done with that shit. And I want to live, I want my life to continue to grow and be positive and be like, that's know, awesome. Oh, you know, yeah. Forever. And I, I don't judge anybody for what they do, but you know, um, it's that, a young man sport, you know, I always think. Yeah, I don't know. I know, I know some old dudes that are still doing doing that yeah. shit, and and you know, Shepard Ferry's still putting up shit and getting arrested and, and doing stuff. Risk is out there doing shit. Scenes doing all those yeah. guys. Barry's still out there writing shit. You know, writing yeah, on stuff. For sure. know, those guys take big risks. Retina still goes out and fucking writes on all over shit. You know what I mean? But I, I think once you, if you've a, if you played the game right when you're young, then you kind of get allowed that freedom as an older writer. You know, those guys that pushed so hard when they were young, now they're writing still and they've allowed themselves to live through their art, right? through their graffiti. And so by doing it, even if they get caught, it's, it's not necessarily that bad for them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Shepard, you know, you have to yeah. take some time out of your life. You have to go to yeah. fucking court. You know, there's an, another group of guys who I like out there in decline who, you know, they did the Naked Trump and they, they've they mm-hmm. been doing some really, they, they haven't gotten the airplay they deserve. Um, mm. They go out and take big fucking risks that are like going up on billboards, shutting off power, right. building, building Trump Cemetery on his lot and on his uh, golf course. If you guys, go, you know, hashtag in decline. Those huh. guys are really putting in like battling, the, you know, they did a crazy one uh, uh, in LA where they took over billboard and about ice you know mm. this, oh, oh that yeah, yeah i saw that, yeah. that we will that take your news, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's mm. you know it's like heartbreaking you know and, and yeah. they are really talking they are taking big fucking risks yeah. uh, to to battle against the, the insanity that's going on right now mm-hmm. uh, sure. in, our, in our political arena so um hats off to those guys because it's it's you know those, when you're going up against guys who you know you got Jeff Sessions you can't you can't wait to lock motherfuckers up you know what I mean yeah. so yeah. you know you, you you take on you know those are some big people yeah so <laughs> it's you know you're not picking on the small guys they're going after the big fish yeah you know? for so, sure <laughs> you know I hope I hope everything continues to go for them where they can you know and I hope I hope I hope uh, my, and my gut feeling is, is hopefully that there's some people with money behind them that will say Something happens, we got you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's a couple programs set up already for like street artists and things like that, that especially if, if they're on that big of a platform, those guys doing that, for sure if they get caught, they're going to have a good amount of lawyers that are willing to spend yeah, and, some time on Yeah, pro bono, get them, yeah. you know, get them, you know, take care of them for fighting the good fight. I That's yeah. that's my best wish for them is that I hope they can keep doing what they're doing because they're talking about the subjects that need to be talked about and... um uh, I hope that that people are paying attention, and if something happens, that they'll be there to to support them. Because, For sure, you know that's that's what needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, I wanted to bring up the last time I ran into you. <laughs> Oh yeah, you were the, yeah. the infamous yeah, it, uh, story. It, it, at this it was point, a good. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, it was a good subject yesterday at the party. This poor, this poor <laughs> oh, really? crazy girl yeah. is going to be talked. You know, maybe that was her point. You never know. Maybe <laughs> she's employing the the Trump technique of if I act fucking really crazy, people will talk about me all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I, you know, it, I, yeah, I mentioned the story a little, or we've like mentioned it back and forth on the podcast, just because it, like the last episode we dropped the artist because uh, I don't know if you know but because when we we were the i was having a conversation with you we're the that's subject the yeah that's yeah. Yeah. Said, hey did you hear did you hear i said i was fuck, yeah, yeah. I, did i hear it i was fucking right where we were, <laughs> yeah. right there when this crazy pants girl <laughs> walked up and bugged out you know yeah <laughs> and so yeah the story is we're having a conversation and then i go to say like oh hi nice to meet you and then we like we're talking we were in the middle of a conversation so i wanted to continue what we were talking about because you yeah. were talking about the process of how you build up 
uh, layers for like and, skin and, tones and, and asking like that. you too about how yeah. you, do, you know that really if you yeah. you know to take the cool away from it so that people don't think we were just these two because we're two giant guys both of yeah. us are over two hundred pounds six foot something yeah. you yeah. know what I mean two guys that if you from a distance could be intimidating but the truth of what we were doing is just art nerding out yeah, like, exactly. like, hey how do you do this section and how do you, you know <laughs> yeah. I mean how do you make this blend and how do you make it so smooth and I really love how you do you know just being art nerds <laughs> yeah, yeah. so sure. we weren't like two like, guys talking about yeah we're gonna get in a fight after this <laughs> fucking bar. you know we weren't like being tough guys we were just being no. art nerds you know what I mean so and you purposely friend, sound nasally or when you, yeah, when so, you well, talk about art obviously me I'm like, hey guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know her friend you know the girl's a talented dude you know, to be honest she's a talented little artist right. you know what I mean mm -hmm. or not talented little artist but a talented <laughs> artist so yeah. I don't want to take away from you know, I'm not making fun of her size even though sure. she is little but um <laughs> The, the the her friend brought her up to us and was like, "Hey, this is so and so." And we're like, we stopped in the middle of our thing and we're like, "Hey, what's going on?" And her first response was the best for me, the best and most craziest part. She just looked at us and went, "Bah!" Yeah. And ran off, and I was like, really? oh, "I was like, what I the fuck is that her?" I was like, "Is that her nickname? What the <laughs> fuck was?" It? I go, I looked at her friend. I was like, "Well, what's up with that girl? What the fuck was that about?" And she like ran outside, and I was all, "Is that how she introduces herself to everybody? Is that yeah. what she wants her moniker to be?" I, you know, yeah, right. I think you know, <laughs> she signs her paintings B A H H H. Yeah, how do you spell that, bitch? I don't, I mean, I, whatever. So, anyway, so she then she comes back and she just starts laying into Josh. Yeah. And, oh, I like your cute oil your paintings. Cute your cute paintings. Yeah, your yeah. cute little paintings. Your pretentious. You know what I mean? She, yeah. Call him, you know, a bunch of fucking names, and, yeah. and Josh was like super nice. He's like, did I do something to offend you? And she's yeah. like, yeah. And she's just like, just <laughs> out of her fucking mind. And then you know, carried on to Irene, and and I'm more on to Josh, and yeah. you know, that's not how you, you know, well, maybe that is because obviously <laughs> it's working because we, you know, we keep talking about it because it's it's you know very it's it's very odd in those yeah. in our circles. You know, some some a lot of artists can be really awkward and have nervous energy, and they're not great. They're introverts, and they're they're used to being in their studio, and it's hard for them to get out there and talk mm -hmm. to people. And I get that, but to be a, 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 overtly, you know just mean on your first introduction is a really bad idea for you know sure i mean it's not how you see I, I think you fucked up when you introduced yourself to saner you should just been bad yeah that's, I, yeah I, I did it wrong yeah. I, mean, I really like that guy i should have just called him a cunt you know? <laughs> exactly yeah it makes you know a good I mean? impression for sure we're best friends now me and that girl <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I, you know i can't see that really happening i mean i you know not, uh, not that i haven't started off on a bad foot with someone and, and then become friends with them i mean yeah if i if i talk about think space uh, a gallery that I'm friends with a bunch of those guys now. When I first started going out doing street art, like like an ass, just like mm -hmm. with Minna, right. right? I mean, I didn't know how to get my art in there. I wasn't really going out and paying attention to how people actually interact. Right. <laughs> but I I I got on this kick about the, the honeybees. You know, thanks to Facebook, every time you see a new subject and they got a bunch of it becomes an issue. And I researched right. about mm. the decline <laughs> yeah. of the honeybee. So sure. I started making these stickers at work and putting up these little my version of a honeybee. And there's a couple mm -hmm. of them in this Minna show too. Uh -huh. um, and I was putting them on, st sticking them all over the place. And then I went down this like kind of gallery row in Culver City where there's all these galleries. Oh, and I sure, was like yeah. sticking it on their windows and different <laughs> stuff. And yeah. I, and, and, and in my defense, <laughs> these stickers <laughs> are these ones that you use uh, when you do like conventions. They're low tack. Right. They're okay. meant to stick on a wall and then peel off, never take the paint off. However, <laughs> if you stick it on a window like Think Spaces and the sun bakes it all day long, uh, it has this weird chemical reaction. And they had this um, graffiti film on the window. Okay. And so when they went to peel it off, it, it fucked their window up. Oh, no. I didn't know this. Yeah. So a couple of days later, I went like sauntering in there like to go check out the show. I looked at the show, went back and talked to this guy, Ken, who I'm friends with now. Uh, and I said, hey, I like your paintings. That guy's paintings are really great. How come they're so inexpensive? And blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, just trying to chat it up. And mm -hmm. then I said, okay, well, my name's Brett. And if you guys ever need prints, here's my, and I gave him like a sticker of my, the name of my print company, Start Vault. And, and then I gave him a stick, one of the B stickers. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, where'd you get that sticker? I go, it's me. <laughs> Like, hey, <laughs> don't you love me? You know, like I was the shit. You yeah, know? And yeah. he's like, dude. The owner fucking hates you, dude. He fucking put a hit out and you told all the other graffiti guys to get you. And I was like, look, we don't want to do that. 
You know what I mean? We know anybody. Look, I'm not one of those guys you run up on. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, let's just not do that because it's a bad idea. I don't want any problems. If I did something, he said, it ruined our window. I said, look, I, I, I'm not going, I'm not hard to find. If he wants right. to find me, he can contact me here. If he wants me to repair it, I'll repair it. And, you know, and that was kind of like a bad way to introduce myself For to sure. a gallery that I really admired. And, mm, and it's yeah. taken, you know, about four years now. I feel like we're, you know, I'm on great terms with those guys and good friends with those mm, guys. Well, and, I, and I admire what they do. And I like the fact that they're putting people in museums. And I think that they're doing a lot of good work um, in the LA area. So, you know, it doesn't, you know, just because you start off on the wrong foot, but my, for sure, <laughs> unlike this girl who, I don't think that was her intent to try to like this, if I do this thing, she, you know, no. Josh will think I'm amazing. But, you know, if you're trying to, like, break in, you, your first impression shouldn't be basically, fuck you, you're a pretentious kind. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a mean, that's a very mean thing to say to anybody, even if you've, they've been mean to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't do anything. You didn't have that coming, and I'm sorry that happened <laughs> to you. And, and if she's being a little troll listening to this, uh, shame on you. You know what I mean? Who am I? <laughs> you know, I, I you know, am and I own the fact that I was a jerk my whole life. So I hope right. that at some point she apologizes and, and she kind of looks at her life and says, that's not a great way to live or whatever. Hmm. Or yeah. know, she can be and like, she seemed very young too. So yeah. I chalk it up to that a good amount. I'll tell her, yeah. to be honest, everybody in the world, whether she is or isn't, they just, they gave her the excuse that she thought they, everybody thought she was on the drugs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause you don't, people who aren't don't usually act. she's either right. drunk or on, you know, are on drugs or either that or she really is needs to go get some help because, mm. Um, you know, I hope that she doesn't wait as long as I did to stop being a jerk. <laughs> For sure. Because mm -hmm. I'm not judging her, but I'm just letting you know that if you're listening to this, that's that's not a great way to meet people and you're a talented artist and you should practice on not both your, if you want to advance your career. Because I didn't, the, the, my life right now is about to make a really great, I have a great, you know, with Avenue Des Arts, I have a really great gallery that really loves me and they their clients seem to be really drawn to my work. And so... That's awesome. Um, uh, I things are going to go good. And, and that didn't happen because I walked in there and, and told the owner, he said, you know, wasn't mean to them. I was nice right. to them. And I, I, I made it clear that I, I liked them and mm -hmm. I showed them my work and they liked it. And then so things happened. And, and if I, you know, if I want to give advice to on that note, I'd like to give some advice to people. And this, my, my key advice about how to make it as an artist mm -hmm. and what I have learned in this new rebirth of my life and be, being an artist is, Learn how to get your fucking feelings hurt. <laughs> Learn how to get your feelings hurt. Tell someone, about you, whether it's your friend or whoever, and say, fuck, I, I submitted this thing. They ignored me. They said no. Right. Uh, whatever. Yeah. But keep trying for a bigger, you know, try to find find your gallery that gets your work. For sure. And yeah. understands your work and who will push your work. And I, and I hope things go great at Mena. I love, love, love Mena. I've wanted to show there forever. But um, find your gallery whatever it is and and be nice to them and before that happens there's going to be a lot of people who either say no to you mm -hmm. who ignore you who don't see you who don't know how to push your work mm -hmm. and it's going to hurt your feelings the ones that are always hurt my feelings the most is when i paid like if i paid to like submit to like a magazine or if i submit to a contest or mm -hmm. yeah for whatever reason because i paid some money <laughs> Mm -hmm. some some of my food money or whatever to submit to their contest and they, mm -hmm. they didn't pick it right that shit really hurt my feelings <laughs> and you know it was a big tough you know whatever i just told this story about how i spent my whole life whatever and i've you know, <laughs> been a tough guy my whole life whatever that's the truth of it, is it, it you know you can get mad about it or whatever you can feel just but the, the gist of it is you're gonna get your feelings hurt a lot as an artist for sure while you're yeah. trying to get to where you're trying to get wherever your goal is not everybody ha my goal is to really like have my art all over the world and tell my stories all over the world, both in paintings and in books and in movies and in animation. And I'm very driven. Like I'm really serious about, I wasted most of my life and I only have not a lot left of it. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to be dramatic, but um, I wasted a lot of time that I should have been making art instead of right. you know making havoc. And so mm -hmm. I am really driven to, to make better art every day be a better person every day and not i'm not great at it every time and not every piece i do is better than the last one but i just keep making more and more stuff and, and i'm falling into a rhythm of making better art but along that way this last five years i've got my feelings hurt a fucking a lot of times mm. and i just would tell my sister about it or I'd tell my girlfriend about it or I'd tell mimi about it and 
and just push forward and and, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's pretty good advice actually yeah i like yeah. the way you put that it's basically another way of saying like learn to deal with rejection and be learn yeah. to be resilient but and, and also sometimes you get in your head that you're the dopest artist in the world <laughs> right and then you know someone will say something like oh i'm not the even people they don't know your art they don't know whose art is whose and they're like oh i don't really like that painting over there and it just happens to be yours <laughs> yeah <It's> like, <laughs> well that's not what they're into. You know, I remember I, I exactly. overheard someone say that about my artwork when I was younger and it infuriated me. I was like, you don't know shit about art. Yeah, I'm the best. And now whenever anyone says anything, I'm like, that's funny. Like, yeah. It's just not for you. Like, I'm 100% exactly. okay with that now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think um, it comes with, you know, and that, honestly, I think that comes though with age and just experience of mm-hmm. just dealing with that kind of stuff. Because there's a whole lot of art that either, you know, I don't want to be, I'm trying to get better at saying it instead of just saying that's garbage. Right. I just say, I don't. I don't understand. It's yeah. not my aesthetic, and right, some sure. of it I don't. I, I put it on myself because I don't have a lot of art education or art history, even art history education. I'm trying to, you know, right. study more stuff and and research more stuff. Um, but I, we, my sister and I go. You know, we've been branching out and going to a lot more like big contemporary galleries and different galleries mm. in Los oh, Angeles. Yeah. And there's a lot of really amazing ones that are moving here from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm just to look at art and kind of educate ourselves. And I, yeah. they'll, I'll be really honest. I go in, sometimes I go in and I go, wow, that's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'll go back to the same one a couple shows later and be like, I don't get that at all. Mm. I mean, I can say it about the MoMA. I went to the MoMA while I was in Delancey street and we walked in and they had some, you know, I, I feel weird saying this. Hopefully, you know, I, and I, I invited the, the curator of the moment to, to Nana. I sent out a bunch of invites right. to a bunch of people that I wanted to come. Oh, why not? And I'm, this is how ballsy I am and stupid I am. I send them out to like Jerry Saltz. I send out invites yeah. to like, <laughs> I, you know, high fructose to the story. But that the way they knew about my story is I sent them an invite. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Well, there you and, go. It works, and, 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 and same with, you know, I sent it to Juxtapose. I'd love it for, for them to come. People, those are magazines that I love and have mm-hmm. loved for a long time. And I love that Annie and Attaboy and James, the guy who wrote the story, uh, did it write it for me and made mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you how I I'll be honest fuck I cried like a motherfucker I was so happy when I saw it and it's just the it online awesome. you know uh it it was just like it poured out of me I've, I'll be honest in the last few months I've you know right just openly when I as it's been coming just like broke down and it just becomes un, unbelievable to me sometimes huh. you know what I mean just like so like not like sad tears like, like right. it just feels uh, like so surreal to me sometimes right. and that's cool and I know a lot more is coming but uh, it's it. So I, you know, I invited the guy from the moment. But going back to the story about um, not understanding art, I, we went there and they had this like sculpture that was made out of nylon that hung from the ceiling okay. from one point. I'm gonna try to describe it so you know. Just think of testicles, okay? Because that was what it looked like. It looked like as I always do. Right, it, it, I was already doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It looked, it was made out of nylon and it came from a point in the ceiling and it came down to these two giant, like, you can imagine like a bean bag. Sure. But okay. like the size of like this room. Like it was, they were giant. Huh. They yeah. looked like giant scrotum. Like it was, I, and I walked in and I go, I like I used the singular scrotum. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I just like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Is that, <laughs> You know, so, but I don't, but I get it, you know, I'm sure maybe that was the response they wanted, or maybe it was something else and maybe all I saw was balls. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> yeah. What if it was called scrotum or something? Like, what if it was nothing deeper than that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I I don't know, but it, there's a lot of other stuff in there that I really love, you know what I mean? But, and I, I invited, you know, the, the curator for contemporary painting to, to the show. I, I, uh-huh. I have this, I coined this new phrase called, uh, man, imagine a festing. Maybe they've mm-hmm. said it before someone else, but that Imagine, I, I don't know. Wait, what was it? So Imagine it's man, so it's, so it's, so okay. it's manifesting. You know, uh-huh. I, mean, I think that it's uh-huh. possible to manifest your own destiny and manifest what you want to happen by, by you know, kind of pushing yourself forward towards the thing and, and talking about it and putting that out in the universe, both negative and positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you talk all the time being negative and blah, 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 you're most likely going to manifest a bunch of craziness and negative and for sure. Negative. You know, if you be positive and you talk about positive things and you fight for the right things, mm-hmm. then good things will happen. That's been my experience recently, especially. And, okay. um, but I've also feel like that if you, because we're artists and hopefully we're using our imagination, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not just, um, you know, making photocopies of stuff. Uh, we, right. we're, we're trying to be imaginative about the work we make and make new creative things. Um, try to imagine what you want your life to be mm-hmm. and what you want to happen. So like I imagine the fact that the curator of the MoMA would get off work 
mm. on a Friday at five, right when the show starts at Minna, and we walk over and be like, hey, you're amazing. Come mm. on. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And whether it happens or not, it's a fun moment yeah. to have that kind of daydream. I like, <laughs> sure. I like to have these little, you know, fun things. And if you imagine it, maybe you do manifest it. So I kind of just like smushed them together, imagine the thing. And so, Got it. you know, um, I imagine the fest that high fructose would write about me. And whether, I don't know that I caused that. I just know that, you know, I wanted them to, to either come to the show or, you know, mm. take a look at my work. And I, I love that magazine. I love Juxtapose. And, I, you know, I, I like Jerry Salt's critiques. That's a big risk because he mm. can be a, a real fucking prick mm-hmm. <laughs> on the right, you know, a lot of right, right things. But, you know, I, I don't even know that he would like, you know, you guys know who he is, right? The big art critic from the New York magazine. Yeah. You know, you you invite a critic to your show, you might open up a whole can of fucking shit <laughs> you don't true, want to. Yeah. You might get your feelings hurt <laughs> for sure, a lot <laughs> more than just especially a, if you pick somebody you admire and then they come to your show and they're like, "This is yeah, you, know, you need to practice some more." <laughs> right? Yeah, much more than an artist just yelling "ha" at you. <laughs> right? <"Hah!" laughs> no, I think someone uh, who told me last night that um, at the Minna show, the Wonderland show, some there someone walked up a kind of cup or. A, techies yeah uh-huh. they called them tech bros uh-huh. <laughs> they walked up behind them and, and they were like looking at monty's amazing tupac uh-huh. painting he, you know he did that fucking crazy tupac yeah. statue with the, uh-huh. with his tattoos carved in him and it's just this amazing yeah hashtag make monty famous <laughs> um, uh if you and they were standing in front of him and the, and the guy's like dude if this is under five hundred dollars i'm getting this shit and it's, you know his painting's like a ten thousand dollar painting you know yeah, yeah. and, and <laughs> You know, people just don't, you know, it would have been right. hilarious. No if, if a hilarious is yeah. right behind him and hits him in the head with a pint glass or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. $500. Yeah, if this is under $500, I'm getting this shit. You know what I mean? Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they didn't get the painting. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah no, that's got that shit. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. I think that we're pretty much wrapping this up. Yeah, um, this has good. been the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it, it man. I, yeah. yeah, thanks for yeah. sharing with us your story. It's been super fascinating just hearing you yeah, talk I about know. it. I don't think we talked much at all, but, <laughs> but it was just super interesting. To oh, hear. sorry. Yeah, I'm a, I'm <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I hope you guys have some questions because I'm not really great at talking. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling Sergio on the right here. I was like, I'm just interested. Like, I knew little bits and pieces about uh, your story, so I was like, I'm, I'm just interested because I think it's going to be interesting to hear the story like your story and thanks i mean you gave it to us so that's cool like i mean i really appreciate it i'm assuming sergio does as well yeah uh if anyone wants to find you on your instagram that is brett crawford art Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, i changed fortunately i you know it's it's great about branding when you change sometimes i i I was going by start vault for a really long time Mm -hmm. Um, okay and i people started calling me that. I'm like, that's not my name. It's my business name. I'm like, why do you have it on everything then? Mm. You know? And so I just recently, as things been ramping up to, um, with my art career to change it to Brett Crawford art, because mm-hmm. I want people to be able to find me. And I, right. you know yeah. I mean? and so, um, even if they just see like what, actually one of the things that spawned it is Rosario Dawson came to, um, into action. Uh-huh. And I had done this big peace sign made out of metal and rivets and all this kind of stuff. And she posted up in front of it and she hashtag Brett Crawford. Mm, nice. That's cool. And I was like, that's not my Instagram name. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. So, so I rebranded it and it paid off big time because, you know, we, awesome. we have Kaboo coming up now. Mm-hmm. And I'm this year I'm one of the installation artists. And because if I would have been Start Vault, I've been way down on the list, mm. but this year oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, installation yeah. Artist, I'm on <laughs> the very, I'm on the very top of it right. uh, on a list of, uh, in a row of artists that I've completely, you know, I, I love, I admire Amanda Lynn. I admire, right. there's, a, there's a list, uh, the, the list that the, of artists that go to Kaboo are killers. Like my friend Fendak For sure. and, and Lolo and, and I, you know, just a, a whole long list uh, of Jet like Martinez. Jet Martinez and, and Kelly Ording and all yeah. kinds of people who are, who are phenomenal for know? sure. And so, uh, and just on a luck of alphabetical order, <laughs> mine was the first name and the way they did it in kind of a rainbow thing with yeah. white on this list of names, it's just my nice. name highlighted in white first <laughs> thing. And I, I'll be honest, you know I mean? It, you have these, you would love sometimes for, but since we're on here, have these moments of celebration. I clapped my hands so hard that I kind of <laughs> bruised them a little bit for a couple of days. You know what I mean? I was so, you know, I knew it was just because of the alphabet. I'm not, right. it, but it still felt yeah. great to see my name first and lit up like that. 
got a list yeah. of people who I completely admire. You're That's gonna awesome. see a whole lot of Aaron Aronsons next time. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, everybody's gonna start changing their branding to yeah. AAA. Yeah, yeah AAA Josh Lawyer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious. And yeah. then, uh, do you have a website? I do. It, not, that hasn't changed. It's it's because it's still. I still have my printing business. I, uh -huh. I think it's important. And, you know, another piece of advice to artists is that it's really tough to jump out there in the beginning if you don't have, if you don't keep your job, and if you just expect people to fucking love you from the beginning. It's a good idea to start a business within your business. And so For before sure. I mm -hmm. just jumped into being full time artist, I am still a part time printmaker. And so I still mm -hmm. make really amazing prints, but my client, I don't advertise it anymore. And I, I, I don't go out and give gifts anymore because I don't want to take on a whole lot of new clients. But mm -hmm. if you have a, you know, if you want to order project uh, prints, I make great prints and I make nice. nice. On, I print on metal and wood and bamboo. And, and I have a, a, a couple guys who I share equipment with who when we when the company we work for closed we we purchased some equipment and we we share it between the two of us and i um so if i'm out of town even if i'm painting a mural whatever if you need something i can take the order and my friends are very competent and we have the best equipment in the world because it's all when we left they gave us the choice of well the owner came to us they're closing the business and he, he wanted to be a travel writer and so mm. we closed the business and he says uh, Brett, you're great. You have your business going, and Lauren, you're great. You know, do you guys want to buy the business? And we're like, no, it's <laughs> fucking a lot. Dude. Yeah, There's no way sure. we can fucking afford it, and it's not what I want to do. So I said, but I'll buy some of the equipment mm -hmm. you know, if you'll let us buy it. So he gave us. He really get. He hooked us up. He really loved us. I, another That's time awesome. when the universe gave me a, a, you know, threw me a bone is, is he gave us the equipment. Ron, his name is Ron Green, and he gave us an opportunity to buy equipment at a really great price. And I'm eternally grateful to him because mm. that has been, you know, my lifesaver a bunch of times when people have ordered prints for me for sure. the last couple of years. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm not. I haven't really marketed it other than just being doing the personal touch of reaching out to people who mm -hmm. I admire. Because I've kind of wanted to handpick my people I work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. But that's the great thing about. It's pretty you know, smart podcasts and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, social yeah. media is that if you pay attention for long enough you can kind of see whether someone's an asshole or not because mm -hmm. it's hard to hold up the front for a long time for sure <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. you have to pay attention to it and, and kind of look at the people you want to work with and see uh, yeah. see if they're jerks or not <laughs> uh, i totally agree uh well yeah that was uh that was awesome man thank you cool, so much man. for doing yeah, this. Thank, thank you thank uh, you very much yeah. yeah and uh this has been waiting to dry oh I'm, we're supposed to tell people that if they could rate and review us. <laughs> We've been getting some good uh, ratings and reviews on iTunes yeah. recently. And I put up on Instagram a, a little tutorial on how to do that if you're not clear on how to do yeah. it yet. And it helps so. us out a lot. So it helps us keep doing this, keep pushing out episodes. Uh, so if you guys really enjoy what you're listening to, mm -hmm. if you guys can go to iTunes, rate and review us, that would be much appreciated. Uh, we don't ask for much, but mm -hmm. I'm asking that. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, and if, if you guys could, that'd be great. And this has been Waiting to Dry. If you're still listening, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah.